thing. I'm sorry that you're waiting. That's okay. I'm for Matt. I'm here for you guys. You're not here for me. Well, Matt's here for me. True. So I'm, I'm sorry that you're waiting for him. You know, the fact that he's not here. We should just replace him. Yeah. What is what is his role uh, even? He's head of social media, ah. but. I just wanted that when we started the first podcast, I mean, you can replace him with me if you want. I feel like eventually that'll be something that did I'm you, if you move here, yeah, I would replace him. All right, with cool. You. Yeah, if you move here, babe, we're set with a job. If you want to come out here, yeah, good. All right, huh? Head of social media. No, he'll keep that job. You'll just oh, do a podcast. Got it. Podcast bitch. Dang. I was gonna say all the social media is just gonna turn into me. Smart move. <laughs> just kidding. It's always, <clears throat> it's always a um. I have so many great things to say. They're like they're like fighting in the funnel of my mouth. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like they're coming from the back of my mouth, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, which, I know." Which great thing should I say first? <laughs> it's a good feeling. <laughs> my a good friend of mine was telling me about all the podcasts out there that suck, and I was just like terrified to ask him, like, "What What do you think about my podcast?" Yeah. You know? Sorry, Dave. The CrossFit podcast. <laughs> Dave hates it. Like when I say "I," my, it's always yeah. should be "we." Yeah, yeah. We. The general, the brand. And, um, and, uh, and then he said, so I didn't ask, what do you think about the CrossFit podcast? And then he just throws out there, he's like, ah, oh, that one's lame. That one's the intro's too long. That one's silly. That one, the host is boring as shit, you know, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. And then, um, so then it's like dead. And he, then he said, and I really don't like podcasts, like where you can't see the host and the mics in front of his face. <laughs> but like, I do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want anyone to see me. Well, I think a lot of the hosts probably aren't in it for that. You know, they they don't want to. Maybe maybe some are. I mean, but. I want you to see me enough so you're like, oh my god, if I saw Seven on the street, I could recognize mm -hmm. him, and he's so cool. Oh, that's good. I, but I don't want anyone to see me and be like, damn, he's ugly. As <laughs> fuck. <laughs> that would never happen. Anyways. Oh please. Come on. Oh please. You've got so, an interesting look about you. Oh, thank you. That's very Ar oh. Armenian. Someone said the other day that um, it looks like I'm wearing a gag nose. <laughs> I want to disagree, but <laughs> now that you say it, I can with the glasses. With the glasses, the, it looks like. Oh, yeah. nice of you to show up. You're fired. I am. Yeah, okay. sorry. <laughs> now you can. We'll let him stay for this one at least. Thank you, Verve. Mm -hmm. No, how many games have you been to? Four. Um, and how many? You have a. Oh, you kind of have an interesting backstory. Do I? Yeah. Did we start, by the way? Are we rocking oh, and rolling? We are. Dang. All right. We started three minutes before Matt showed up. Perfect. Matt, you know you're part of the show. Like You're like a regular. Should we catch him up? Matt, you know this is your job. Mm. Like ah. imagine this for 7-Eleven and you showed up three minutes late. The line would be like 20 people <laughs> out the fucking door so now. The Slurpees would be melting. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I feel like somebody would let me cut in line. Yeah, Not cut in line. You're the you're, you're the guy. you're the cashier. You're the cashier. Oh oh, sorry. You, yeah, Jesus, yeah. That, he, he is it. confused as a mo. <laughs> that, that analogy fell into that's because he just jumped right in. I think we need to catch him up. What have we talked about so far? We talked about Trump, mm. the Olympics being in Korea. We talked about Brooke Wells. Brooke oh, wow. Wells, of course. Me Global too. Warming. We talked about me too. Yep. The we market. talked about Savon and his there. nose. We did. Um, we did. Knock my head on. We talked about Dave's. You know. Um, Familial um, vocabulary, right? Wow. There were, nah, there was really only one of those All things. Can you pass me that Zevia? If we had, if you had to pick one of the things you really <laughs> thought that we talked about, hey, did you see they're selling perfect bars in Starbucks now. That's kind of cool. Yeah, they used to be my sponsor. Oh, what happened? I don't know. I just think they lost their love for me. Or, it was either the love or the lust. I don't know. Hey, no, I I, I fully <laughs> endorse you. You're the perfect bar Thank king. You. I think it actually my contract may have like just just ended, and they're like renegotiating or something i don't know i'm you have an agent yeah i have a manager that helps me i'm usually a little out of the loop is on he that nice stuff. he is he's a great dude he's one of my really good friends are you sexist no why isn't it a she it could be she just didn't approach me yet right yeah do you have an agent i sure don't do you, oh do you crossfit do has an agent so basic kind it's of a she yeah. look at that that's the kind of oh man should i start the show with something like that no <laughs> okay i don't know yeah, what it is but no i don't, know. I don't think so either <laughs> I'm nervous, <laughs> nervous and excited. I just made something like a, a, a male sh sh female thing, like a, a like a sex thing, like yeah. gender thing. When there's no reason to make it a gender yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. but like people do that all the time. For so sure. like I just want to fucking choke them. Yeah, not make that the theme of the. But episode. I don't understand because 
I've never been oppressed, so I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, I agree. We're we're I'm diving short, into though. it. We're about to. I'm like holding myself back from seeing stuff, but um, yeah, I, we can talk about that later. I'll just maybe. give your girlfriend the thumbs up the whole time. We're good, babe. <laughs> no, I love I love girls and women. And, You've been yeah, to the CrossFit yeah. Games four times. I've been to the games four times, yes, sir. Um, I really like you. Thank you. We've always had a good like relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I'm going to get in trouble for this for sure. But I don't Might know as well get it out of the way early. <laughs> <laughs> when everyone's still listening. Like when, when she hears this, she's definitely not going to be happy with me. But <clears throat> after She's it pregnant. Out. No. Yeah, that, can you imagine if I announced that on here? That'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> Tap on the glass. She, hey, she doesn't even know, actually. <laughs> but no, in, uh, in 2000, I think it was 14, actually, Joanne was at the games with me. And there was like a, a little thing that... You guys did it. I think it was in the behind the scenes where you pieced together this thing with Brooke Wells and I, and you like put glittery, starry eyes and made it like this fake little love story for like 10 seconds. And Joanne saw that clip. She's like, I don't like Savon. And so <laughs> I've been battling that for three years. I was like, babe, I like him. He's really cool. Like, give him a chance. And then last night after we left your house, I was like, come on, do you like him now? She's like, yeah. So you're good in our book. You're- we were sitting. We were we were standing in the underground. Yep. Um, everyone was in full asshole mode for because they're exhausted and tired and yeah, tense yeah. and they're getting lectured by Dave and you're they right. just want to fucking eat and go to Athlete Village. And like usual, you're fucking no Olson, chill. You're fucking having around. fun and you're flexing your pecs. Oh, that was what it was. While Dave was yeah. announcing the workout, I was just bouncing my boobies. And I was <laughs> and I was and I was enjoying that. And I looked over and Brooke Wells was enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Well, you added like the old school '80s, like a little <laughs> cloud that's in a hey, heart. And... I'm a documentarian. For I didn't sure. add that shit. That's some uh, cheesy editor who did that. Okay, okay. I'm a documentarian. Someone else did that. So the anger was being misdirected. <laughs> yes. So I'll, we'll let her know. Hey, let me editor. tell you, if no women were tracking you, then your woman wouldn't want you. So maybe that's true. But anyways, you would be good. a hamster. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that means either. I've never called anyone a hamster. I don't want to be a hamster. Chinchilla. It works too. All right. I'll take it. The um... Speaking of the behind the scenes, first one just came out. Yeah. Oh, so no by, way. So by the time this comes out, who knows? We might cool. be episode four or five. Dang. With I more, pe- with more peck dance. I hope everyone's Is enjoying. there a little bit of that in there? You've always been featured pretty heavily in the behind the scenes, right? Cool. I, maybe. Maybe. Oh, good. I'm I glad you watched that. Amount. I do, I do. I just don't know. Like, I haven't <laughs> tracked my minutes, but um, yeah. It's actually, we were talking about it last night. Heber. Some people get none. Yeah. No, most for sure. People, most people get none. There's I'm, only one of me. I'm very appreciative. But yeah, that's um, what I want to hear. Stroke me. <laughs> who was it? Hebrew was telling me about his movie, and I was saying something about behind the scenes, and he said it's kind of for like two different audiences, and I said, you're right. I have friends that love my friend Andrew Gwynn actually I think he just likes you because he listens to the I podcast I love Andrew he's yeah. awesome yeah he's a good dude he actually he's awesome yeah so he'll be happy that he's getting a shout out but totally. he watches is he weeks. Asian no is he black no Gwen Andrew Gwynn Gwyn, G-U-I-N-N oh yeah, he's, a, he's got a big nose a big white dude uh no probably pretty average though. No. all right but uh anyways he is always like waits for the behind the scenes to come out and so yeah, there are definitely people that love the behind the scenes and people that love like the heavily edited movie style cinematic pieces. And the doc is amazing this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. they showed me the trailer yesterday. It was pretty thrilling. Yeah, that's Holy all I've seen. fuck! Yeah. Oh, I thought of something else. Damn it! Are you allowed to curse as much as you want on here? You are. Yeah, you're allowed to burp, curse, pick your nose. Brody, I don't do any of that. Cooper was on and he's like, oh, I don't want to cuss, and he swore like three times. <laughs> Did he? <really>? Yeah. <laughs> So, so I want to talk about like your history from like when you came into the world to the present. Okay. Like baby, or, baby. Okay. Um, and I want to talk about a little bit about like your, your athletic aspirations and, and, and how you came into CrossFit. But then there's this whole like list of like th- things like controversy around your character <laughs> that are weird to me yeah because really? you're so uncontroversial yeah do you, do you know what i mean yeah definitely. You're, you're you're um you're kind of vanilla 
I'll take it. I really And can't. yet there's these 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 like these accusations about you and Spiel and you and Froning and you and steroids really? and I'm like I don't even know any of those, so oh, I'm interested great. to get into that. Maybe I <laughs> so, know one of them. It was a really delicate know. way to come vanilla, yeah, yeah. by the way. It's like a, a shit sandwich in there. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, Matt knows my great. technique, my very, manipulation. Very delicately delivered. <laughs> but you were um, <laughs> um I mean you're you're I mean you're you're only um your only possible quality of, of corruption is the fact that you lived in Miami. You lived in the state of Florida. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That probably, I mean, that right there makes you go, hmm. I'm sure when we get into that, I probably have a little bit of reasoning behind maybe how it ended up going one of the directions that it did. But uh, for the most part, yeah, I, I really don't like conversation. I like being, what did I say? Conversation? I meant confrontation. Mm. I don't like confrontation and... Uh, I like just sharing joy and making people happy and I want people to like me and like the the world. So I, I, it is weird that that got a little twisted for a bit, but I think it straightened itself back out hopefully and just keep. Um, I want people to like me too. What? But, but then sometimes it's like success isn't going to come if everyone likes you. Yeah. Or, yeah, that's or, possible. Or not necessarily. I don't know that as fact. But, but like when I think of people who like, like some people don't like Bob Marley. And I'm yeah. like, <laughs> how is that possible? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but Bob no, Marley I get it. doesn't piss people off. You know, I don't think you have to piss people off to be, you know, some sort of, to achieve some sort of notoriety. No, like Noah doesn't try, like Noah, like all the things that I'm going to accuse Noah of today, <laughs> none of them seem bad to me at all. And yet some people have attached some negative attributes to these behaviors when I'm yeah. just like, hmm. huh. I, yeah, I don't know. I think it, maybe it's the new world too. Like all the, there's so much of the social media and people's personality gets shared and told, like stories get told in different ways. And maybe that didn't happen as much in the future and happens now more because of all these platforms. I don't know. You know what I'm noticing from the podcast? Mm. Well, I'm about to say something brilliant. Matt, write this down. I'm excited. Eric, press record. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Um, there's people who have respect for other people. Let's say like there's people who have respect for Matt. And so, like, there's absolutely there's they, there's when you respect something, there's like this rule book of things you can't say to him. And so, when I say something about Matt, let's say I were to call him Maddie, people be like, "You call him Mr. Bischel. You're so disrespectful." You know what I mean? Huh, yeah. They put certain people on pedestals, and and when other people break those rules that they have for those people, they have to go in and regulate. Yeah, they they feel like they have to go in and regulate. I get like that. us, like someone commented on a. Uh, I can't remember his YouTube or Instagram somewhere that um that it was completely inappropriate that I asked Brooke Wells if she gets dick uh, Brooke Wells. Oh. If I if I asked Brooke Entz if she gets dick pics. Okay. That's totally inappropriate. Just you're just asking a question, yeah. I like, mean, dude, you have an Instagram account with all these insane pictures of your beautiful sure. body, like for sure. I mean, I don't send dick pics. By the way, but we, uh, but so I know dick pics are a real thing, and so like if I'm guessing like that's the kind of person you send them to. This, no one's sending me any dick pics. That's probably a good thing, though, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, it depends on who you're asking. <laughs> but don't gonna, judge me. I'm going to digress for, me. for one second, a quick tangent. You Go. said something about a, a line from a Drake song that that Brooke posted. It was uh, something so about being... So thick that it makes people uncomfortable. Yeah, what? I, I read that, and I was really impressed that you knew that, by the way, because I love Drake. Uh -huh. And I the song came into my head immediately, and I know that the preceding line is something about Claire Huxtable. Yes. And I just couldn't remember what the song was. Something It's called Only, and it's something like an ass as big as Houston and a face like Claire Huxtable or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a crazy – it's basically him and Lil Wayne serenading Nicki Minaj as okay. only – yeah, yeah. With just some crazy Man, ghetto, I, ghetto rap. I love it's, that dude. He, yeah. I met, he was just in Miami. Drake was at uh, high school in Miami, and he went to the University of Miami yeah, where I went on right. campus and filmed a music video and like gave out a scholarship, and I missed wow. it. That was my chance. Jewish black kid from Canada. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So where were you born? I was born in Providence, Rhode Island. Why? Uh, that is where my parents lived at the time. Why? Because uh, that's a good question. I don't, that's, Did they come over on the Mayflower? Maybe. Yeah. No. They, uh, I think my my like parents have in, been. Who lives in Rhode Island? I don't think I've met anybody from. Rhode I have a lot of family up there. That's kind of the Olson and Lapin family home base up in the Rhode Island area. But we moved 
down to Florida shortly after I was born. Like two, I was two. We moved to Tampa, lived there for like a year, and then down to for your parents' work. Yeah, for my dad's job, um, and we just kind of tracked down the coast and ended up uh, a long stint in Palm Beach Gardens, like West Palm Beach, mm-hmm. Florida area, uh, for probably ten to twelve years, and then another ten to twelve like an hour south of that in the Fort Lauderdale area, Pembroke Pines. And then I, that was like middle to high school, graduated high school there, did a year of college at Clemson University in South Carolina. Oh, I've heard of that. They got like a basketball team or some shit. They have a bunch of teams. Their football team is <laughs> Football, pretty, maybe yeah. football. I mean, they got something that I hear about. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the Tigers. Like, I, like, you, like as I'm flipping through the channels, I don't flip through the channels, but I've heard the name. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Clemson. It was, it was cool. It just wasn't. What are you laughing at? You're just, I mean, that's three, like, <laughs> pop culture, like, mainstream sports references you've done in, like, the last 24 hours, and it's just blowing my mind here. It's awesome. There you go. It's go good. on, continue. I'm more no, interested you're good. in what you're, you're saying. Good. Um, so, post-Clemson, down to University of Miami. I Freeze. transferred. What's up? Siblings? One younger sister. So she was born when you were in Tampa. She's a Floridian. Um, where, she may have been born, I think she was born in Rhode Island. I, I know she was born in Rhode Island, and then we moved down after. So she was like... So she's maybe, close in age. Yes. she's. I think I was two and a half when we moved. I'm like just over two years older than no, her. Did your parents drive or fly when I you moved? I don't know. I feel like, should I know that? I'll ask him. Not okay. sure. Well, you can't fly all of your stuff, so yeah. Well, that's There's what I'm wondering, and, and yeah, like yeah. traveling with like if you were two and she's three months, I mean that's a for sure. That's you're hard. acting like it's like the Oregon Trail here. They're going by like horse and carriage. <laughs> that would they got, they you, got you don't movers. have kids. You don't even understand. Yeah, people get movers. Yeah, I don't know. I no one gets a mover. Matt's never gotten. You're a not going to have to pull off the wheels and cock the wagon to ford the river here. Okay. And you said cock. cock. I, know, I cocked that too. <laughs> you cocked that too. Yeah. yeah. Any Oregon Trail two players out there? See, that's where you and I see eye to eye. Even at the games, you and I will crack those jokes like someone will say something yeah. like like we'll hear you and i'll be standing underneath the um something yeah with all the athletes and you hear the commentator be like those are some huge balls rolling down you know you and i'll be like balls, balls. <laughs> yeah you gotta add a little moments of humor in there and the rest of the athletes are all yeah super mm-hmm. serious i there are moments for that where that's uh necessary but i think to try to like be able to breathe easier and relieve a little bit of the pressure and stress you got to find some time to smile breathe it's not easy to do no under duress and stress you're comfortable yeah. telling me to take space like in the behind the scenes i'm never yeah, but have i ever i don't know i mean you'll I'm... just you'll be like hey i, I gotta go warm up right or that's usually there there's probably you're never like this you never give me like the heisman no definitely not which matt has done in the gym one time wow. throwing a temper tantrum that's mean so, sorry i'm the only one who's ever thrown a temper tantrum in the gym you're the yeah, only you one who's ever like the, pushed me in the gym. You have the protective film on your your piece. Do you mind if I take that off? Or do we keep it on there for a reason? All right, cool. So um, forty shows in, Eric, and there's still this packaging on. Am watching this? Here? I'll, I'll work on my resume. Um, <laughs> oh, I can't get right, update my it, LinkedIn. Again. Yeah, update that LinkedIn. Eric, you don't have time to look for a new job. You work <laughs> twenty three you know. twenty three hours a Thank day. You. Thank you. So I was uh, I would say ninety percent of the time I'm super easygoing and low stress and love to like interact with you with fans with friends blah 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 and then when it's like really close when it's crunch time when it's to the point where it's like almost stressful that i need to go warm up then i'm kind of like hey i'm so sorry but i gotta go kind of do my thing right now and i noticed that down at a competition in miami and um i was spending so much time interact because we i did a team so i was just out interacting with people, taking pictures, doing this and that. And then I realized our event started in 10 minutes and I was like, oh my gosh, I got to like run to the warm up area, get ready to go and then head out there. And that's How old are you like again? 26. Do you need to warm up? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Not, not an incredible amount. Uh, and sometimes it's dependent on the day, but for the most part, I'm on probably the lower end of the spectrum of needing a crazy amount of time to get warm. Yeah. So you move to uh, Florida. Yep. What, what, what's your dad's vocation? He now is a CrossFit affiliate owner, but prior to that- he, Oh, I've seen your dad. Yeah. He looked like an older, buff version of you. Yeah. He, yeah, that's right. We and do look very similar. He's stout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a very similar body type. I'll, I can pop up a picture if you want, but- um, Or he can just find it on your Instagram. Yeah, maybe something like that. There was- Find you on- we the, did What's your thing, dad's name? Uh, Bill Olson, Robert okay. William Olson, but we did a little thing for men's health. It was like a very brief piece, and so there was like a side by side that we looked pretty similar. But 
Um, Did you get a photo? Yeah. That's all that matters. That's what I was going to pull up. For, but uh, what was I saying? Oh, so he was in commercial real estate for okay. a long time. So they would like buy big properties, renovate them, resell them. And within the last like five, 10 years, it was really over that because he'd been doing it for so long. And I had gotten both of my parents into CrossFit. And I don't know, he just kind of got really wrapped up in the idea of being an affiliate owner and kind of running the business side of things. And what's the name of the affiliate? CrossFit Winwood. And it's in? It's in Miami. Were you surprised that your dad got into CrossFit? Um, n- yes and no. I mean, at first. Your when, mom does it too? Yep. Yeah, she's she's taken a, a little mini hiatus from it, but I think she'll get back to it. <clears throat> um, she was probably the one that surprised me a little bit more because my dad kind of always was an athlete and even played in like lacrosse clubs as an older guy like the 10 years ago. And uh, so I, I figured he could be transition right into it, but I'd never seen my mom do anything like – super physical right she's an awesome person and an awesome mom but um i hadn't seen her do much exercise and she had gone to some of the competitions and there he is oh look at his hair (laughs) got some good flow that picture's kind of old that's from like um 2014 and you pulled up the old blog that's super old school the blog before your before your blog yeah this was i actually started writing that blog before i even knew what CrossFit was. That was a long time ago. But, um, yeah, so my mom had gone to competitions. They, my, both my parents had and were very intimidated by it, right? Because when you go to a competition, all you see is the high-level stuff and the heavy weights and the fast stuff. And so my mom was like, I could never do that. That's what CrossFit is. No way. And then I kind of slowly showed them, like, at Peak 360, the gym that I kind of got my start at. And um, they, is, that, is that Guido's gym? That is Guido's gym. Yeah, Guido's my dude. But – they were able to both kind of slowly get into it and realize that you can scale and do all this. And now they enjoy it. And, and my dad enjoyed it so much so that he opened his own gym. Are you like crazy proud of them that they do it? Yeah, it is really, really cool. It was fun. Uh, what was it? I don't know if it was, I think it was two years ago in the open. They both did it. And so I was able to be there for both of them and all the workouts. And that was kind of fun to have them cheer me through it and then me cheer them through it. And very cool. I'm just happy that they're able to like, get out and socialize for an hour and get fit and move around and have fun. That's the main thing that I'm happy about them being able to do CrossFit for. I, um, the fact that my mom does CrossFit is like, it's, it's enormous. Super for me. cool. Yeah, yeah. I just saw you post a video of her. Doing yeah. Like a the fact that she's video. concerned about her health and she's taking yeah. care of herself. I yeah. mean, for sure. That's with awesome. something that's so well-rounded and so applicable to life. I'm just like, yeah, totally. Yeah. She just did her second. She did the, um, she's done her L1. And then she did the master's course, and she said they were both. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. I'll have to recommend the master's course to my dad. I know that was a direction that he wanted to take the gym. He wanted to offer, like, specialty classes for the older population. Florida. Yeah. What does that mean? Old motherfuckers. Isn't it just? I thought it was (laughs) just retired people in Florida. Ah. I thought it was just where Jewish people go to. um... That's like Boca Raton. Yeah. Oh, he really looks like you there. Yeah, the body type. Holy cow. Hey, if your dad was a... Oh God, I don't even know if this is the right word. If your dad was smaller, uh-huh. like a lot smaller, he could look like um, Tyrion, uh, Lannister, uh, Tyrion Lannister. Yeah. Oh, the, from Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a midget. Who is it? I think. Have you seen his commercial where he's singing some DMX yes. songs? Yeah, that's pretty funny with Morgan Freeman as well and Missy Elliott. Morgan's kind of a sellout. Is he? Yeah. All right. uh, just for doing the uh, Mountain Dew thing. Yeah. You're a Doritos guy. I'm not. not yeah. It was the same commercial, so why isn't that guy so that? Well, because I'm be, I'm being racist, but like like I'm Armenian and I would never like want to like push anything on my on my peeps. Got it. And the fact that he's a black dude and he's and he's selling a sugary drink that's just like <laughs> fucked. Like you you have to drink calories to fuck yourself. Yeah. Like that's like yeah, like yeah. if you can just not drink calories, you you that's step one to like a road to health. Health. Yeah. And to be pushing that. And be such an iconic figure and successful, beautiful, well-spoken it. man. It's like go fuck yourself. Ooh. It's irresponsible. Yeah, it really is. I'm yeah. not saying that. I, I want him to make coin. I want him to like fly in the helicopter from Manhattan to fucking wherever the fuck they go. But Just in a but, way that's beneficial for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Like that is a bad drink. Mountain Dew is like if you want caffeine, 
go eat beans. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You do coffee. not need. You I do not don't need. Know what you mean by eat beans? Like put coffee that, beans. Put like that on drink, a shirt. Drink coffee. Oh eat man, beans. Never mind. Like, do you drink soda? Beans. No. Do you drink any sugary drink? I will say, I'll admit, I'm probably going to get in trouble. I would say like once a year, mm -hmm. I'll have a soda just to like completely be like, man, it's been so long and sometimes it tastes good, but no, I don't. I drank a diet soda in the airport the other day because I needed caffeine and I needed to, I wanted to read on the flight home. I didn't want to fall asleep. Yeah. And this fucking dude slapped the shit out of me. Yeah. Hey dude. I'm like, what? He's like... What are you doing? I'm like, I need caffeine. He's like, well, get some fucking coffee. Yeah, like yeah. you know, just like I think that was a direct quote. And that and that's like, <laughs> that's what we should do to each other. Yeah, hold each other accountable. Yeah, like what the fuck are you doing? Don't don't drink. That's like, anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, I got it. That's I get what you're saying about Morgan Freeman, though. I mean, yeah. and I like the African American him. community is rad. Just replace me with this chronic disease, <laughs> with Shawshank this little man. Damn, I got replaced. Do you see it? <laughs> hey, yeah, and in that, I don't see it so much with you. And in that DMX commercial, he's got the um, the facial hair. Yeah, yeah, the goatee. And DMX looks like I think they show him off in the side, and he looks like he's been drinking, sipping the soda. Yeah, he, he looked like he put on like <laughs> fifty pounds. Yeah. Speaking of goatees, check this bad boy out. I really like it. Thank you. I don't hate it. It's uh, it's my best effort. This is the most facial hair I've ever had. But you have facial <laughs> hair without um, without looking older. Oh, cool. Yeah, I thought it made me look like a little bit of a French distinguished gentleman at first. And that was kind of why I kept it because we did go to France. You do this. look distinguished. <laughs> Thank you. But I now I'm kind of like ah, it's so with me. I got pathetic. I got this mustache. I feel like it makes me look like five years older. <laughs> Yeah, it's super copy looking. Too. Why? Copy. That's a good word. <laughs> Can Patrick Vellner slap the shit out of the CrossFit Games champion? Like down on his face and rake his face in a purposely missed high five. Mm -hmm. And people think it's funny. I yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess they, they I saw that and I was so sorry. Go ahead. Finish. It's Most not it's not cool to interrupt. Most importantly, oh, yeah. <laughs> like a pot calling the kettle black over here. <laughs> Every other comment on YouTube is, I need to shut the fuck up and stop it. <laughs> By the way, when people write that shit, it just makes me want to interrupt more, so go fuck yourself. Mm. Um, uh, and yet you patted Spiel on the head in 2014 or 15. Do you remember this? I don't. And you called mm. him Spiely. Do you remember this? No, not at all. Oh, that's amazing. That story's never gotten back to you? No. Every year since it's happened, your first year at the games, someone has, has brought that up to me. That's oh, so no, it did that thing that disrespected Spiller. This is the first you're hearing of this. Huh, yeah. Yeah. I wonder, do you guys have a clip of that? No. No, no, no. Just a, okay. just a hear, maybe, I mean, you could be like, hey, that's bullshit. That never yeah. happened. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, that sounds like something I would do. Not out of disrespect, but just out of like being playful. Jo Hi, Joanne, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Joanne like you said did. that that's a totally fault of does. mine. I nickname people right away, and she's like, sometimes people may not like that you do that. But mm. like, I'll, I've called you Sevs, like. Okay, give me some. What do you got for me? Uh, <laughs> Vaughn, we were, we were We were three minutes into the show, and you told me that you could definitely see that I might be wearing a gag nose. I didn't say that. You said that. <laughs> yeah, I, but you I said, said you I don't disagree. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, what if I called you Tosi? Tosi. Yeah. Ooh. Right? That's not bad. No, that's, that's like my style. I so 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 you you I I know all men are not created equal. I know judgment is different for everybody. Right. You know, but for some reason like that that like I heard that. Mm -hmm. I heard the athletes talking about that. That's, That's so fucking uncool. <laughs> he should have never done that. Blah blah. I I think it's totally fine. Okay. I think yeah. it's benign. I think I think like I said, I mean, in the kindest way possible, I think you're um what was the word? Vanilla. Vanilla. Playful. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, play, yeah, playful. I mean, just just from getting to know you the last few days, like it's it's just that's your nature. Yeah. Like I can see you just like give a nickname, you know, hey, you know, tactile Q or yeah. tactile yeah. somebody. Like I don't see that out out of bounds at all. For but that's sure. just me. I mean, I that's probably because I don't know. In my mind, I guess like how else am I gonna connect with? I'm sure there are other ways, but for me, that's just an easy way to immediately kind of like build a bond with somebody a bro you know is to like give them a nickname nah, i was gonna say touch them but that sounds weird but yeah you nah, know I, I, touch him. Just, touch him. yeah I, I don't see anything wrong with that like a bro i don't know mm -hmm. but I, I mean i really don't remember that i could see how maybe if it was my first year and but that was not the first time chris and i have met chris and i 
um, he did my level one back in the day. I definitely idolized Chris. I thought it was amazing that he was at my L1. I was mind blown. I got to work out with him that day. And then there was another time when uh, we were both at an event together and we shared a hotel room. And this is actually a funny story. Um, I was taking a shower and I still like I had only met him at the L1. So I still thought he like he was the man to me. And I was like, no way I'm sharing a hotel room with Chris Spieler. And so I'm showering and he just walked in and started peeing in like the <laughs> toilet while I was showering. I was, there's a curtain and everything, but just started talking to me, chit chatting while I was taking a shower. He's taking a pee. And I was like, all right. We're bros now, right? So I can I probably call him Speely if he can pee while I'm showering. I, say, I feel like you're you're into the realm of nicknames if yeah. you do that. For yes, sure. yes. <laughs> if you're both in the room and you're soaping your nuts and he's holding his penis, then you're you're <laughs> next good level. Yeah, yeah, next level. Yeah. There is no athlete who is more personable and more giving of their time than you at the CrossFit Games during no, the competition. Come on. I, I mean, I mean, I interact with with. I mean, I mean, I haven't interacted with them all. Yeah. But all the ones I've interacted with, there's no one who's more accommodating. You know, you know, uh, cool, your, you. your peer probably on the female side, which okay. always catches me off guard. I was like, can we guess? Yeah. You want to guess? Uh, you sound like you have one already. I'm going to think about it for a second. Uh, I was hoping you would guess and buy me some time. Oh, um, I'm going to say... Uh, at, at this well, you said caught you off guard. So. Yeah, two years in a row caught me off guard. Caught me off guard at the regionals. I mean, just she is um, like crazy yeah. accommodating. Uh, Katrin. Wow. That, that, yeah? Yeah. Oh, all right, okay. see you guys later. She's the... <laughs> all, all, all the doters are pretty um, remarkable on camera. Yeah, they're all they um they all intimidate me a little bit. They're not like as easy for me to approach as your yeah, approach. But I get that. Annie, Sarah, and Katrin. There, as soon as I approach them, it could be fucking like it. They just finished. Yeah, or they're about to go on, and, and I'll walk with my go. camera. Yeah, I have actually noticed that Katrin is really good at um, like a big old smile right after she finishes an event. You know, she's definitely puts on that like representative persona whether she does well or she does poorly she's always like carries herself well yeah did you see the um the the women's final um when tia and uh miss webb fucking went to war in that final yes yeah that's cool we were all actually all the guys were in the warm-up area still while they were going so we were getting ready to go do that event and they had it on the tv so we were all kind of like anxiously watching and like could oh. you feel the emotion yeah definitely I mean, like everyone, all the camera guys. Every, I think the only people I saw that weren't crying were like Jamie Green and Carrie Pierce. <laughs> and everyone else I looked at was like bawling. <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget Cotron's face. Yeah, that's yeah, it crazy. Was, yeah, it was intense. She wasn't smiling then. Well, a little bit. <laughs> so there's no recollection of the Spiel incident. Spiely. No. Bad on the head. But I, I Close your eyes when they walk you through it. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I, I, so, so, so I... I'm shocked that things like that stick, but like I think there is a false um uh uh there's a biblical term for it, I think. Like idolt idolatry. Idolatry. Mm, like sure. like holding like there's this there's this people hold Spieler up so fucking high that it's not okay to pat him on the head and say, Hey Spieley. Yeah, like like a false idol? Yes. Mm. It's like it's like, hey dude, we're just people here. Yeah. And like what's Noah really doing? He's a really nice fucking guy who's just bonding, saying hi. Like, there's nothing demeaning in it. Yeah, I definitely. Like, like if I was, you, I mean, Vellner worked Fraser at the finish line. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> I was surprised by that. I didn't know how that was uh, gonna go down. You expected to see a right, a right hook come back. Yeah, I don't know, but they're um, both men's men in their own way, and so, um, they both took it well yeah like you know what i mean like matt's like a man like, yeah yeah that shit's fine you know what i mean but <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah but no i um i the pat on the head thing that sounds i can see how people would think that's demeaning when you're like oh you're cute but it mm -hmm. wasn't that at all i when uh like last night tyson is, oh yeah that is how that is how it was taken okay way, that yeah. you were like oh you're so little and cute no really definitely not i mean he's i'm probably the same size as him i'm not much bigger than that guy <laughs> yeah weigh him by 40 pounds 40 uh, yeah. what do you weigh i don't know 185 yeah he's 140 yeah that's crazy but <laughs> he doesn't know that anyways uh, <laughs> I, th I, th I, th I think when he started crossfit he's about 140 and at the end of his career he's 152 yeah by end of his career i mean gotcha. he's individual for sure 
Okay. Um, I don't just like Tyson has a bald head, and mm. I I don't know why I have an affinity to it? rubbing. Yeah, I touched it last night. So I think that's maybe Chris is bald also. So maybe I was just rubbing his shiny bald head, and then just greeting him, saying hi, and giving him the nickname. So does that make you uncomfortable familiar. knowing that Noah's touched Tyson's head? Why? No. Is that off? Have limits? you ever touched Tyson's no, head? Never. Why? Why would I? <laughs> Is that I've, off limits? I've definitely touched his head. But I mean, you I'm, have touched his head? Yeah, multiple times. You've rubbed Tyson's head? I mean, rub is a bit. I don't know if I go that far, but I've definitely like squeezed. Like you've like because it's like um, uh, enticing because it's bald. Yeah, it's shiny. Well, I I think there's it's also there's also a comfort level. I mean, I was an aquatic athlete. You were too. Yeah. It's like that. Like touching and shit like doesn't really bother me that much. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't see an issue with any of that. All right, I like it. I don't have an issue with it. I just, I, I like, I am Some close with Tyson. I never touched mm-hmm. his head yet. Yeah. Yeah. You, you should give it a try it. today. I'm, today. I'm, take I'm it for a test. So drive. tempted. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to get a photo he if I do should. it. <laughs> and I just t- and <laughs> title it Sevon Touching Tyson's Head. Okay. I mean, you couldn't touch my head if you wanted to. Because I, Because I have hair. That's true. I mean, I could touch the hair on your head. Yeah. And push down to make but it's kind of like it's it's pretty intimate i feel like just touching someone's like right on their cranium like my <laughs> fingers on it's, your well, it's probably dome. more intimate if you had hair and you like i don't know if you ran your fingers through something right hair, yeah that would definitely that be more intimate more... would that, <laughs> that would... <laughs> yeah. oh matt's um matt's digging into my personal life oh, <clears> on the show all right there's something There's I saw an on the inside internet. thing going on Something you saw. You should watch the behind the scenes. Okay, yeah, I will. Maybe I for I the didn't, first time. I didn't. Ca- I'm, I'm a huge Emily Abbott fan, and we had this. Yeah, she's cool. We had this encounter. She and I are homies. You are. Yeah. She's have you ever rad. put your fingers through her hair? No. Oh. I, I don't know if Joanne would like that. Wow. <laughs> now we're on to something. Yeah. Um. So. Uh. So. So. So you go to Florida. Yep. You do your um elementary school, junior high, high You're school. Good at coming back from tangents. Thank yeah. you. Um, you do your you do your do you play any sports? When, what's your first sport that you pick up? So, growing up, I played a little bit of everything. I played like flag football when I was really little, and some soccer, some baseball, and when I was and when you say some, you mean like organized? Yep, like teams. Yeah, like seasons. part of okay. a, a exactly. And then, so my dad actually was a two time All American lacrosse player at Brown University, and so that was his background. And I eventually he wanted me to get into that so he introduced me to that when I was probably I would say somewhere between like six to eight years old and then that became my sport and I got really good at lacrosse and was kind of thinking about that being my sport and my future maybe going to college and playing professionally are you big enough for lacrosse I don't know shit about it like do you have Uh, to be big or no no no, there's not really size I mean there are some positions where the guys will be bigger but like an attack min or a midfielder those are different positions they could you could be like a short stocky fast guy is the stick with the kind of the equalizer in that game? Because like, if you're good with the stick, doesn't matter your size. Whereas in football, Pretty you kind of have to be big. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's. I mean, there is physical contact in the cross, but it's not as much like grabbing, moving as football because you can get around people just by being agile. So size is not as much of a factor. So in high school, that's your sport. So all the way up to high school, that was my sport, and that was my plan to do in high school. But where we lived at the time their high school that I was supposed to go to where all my friends were going to go did not have a lacrosse team because it's not very popular. I'd never even heard of lacrosse till I went to college. Yeah. Hmm. So I kind of had a choice to make and it was either I was going to go to a private high school (coughs) that was like an hour away and have to do this long drive and leave all my friends that I, and we had just moved to where we were like three years ago. So I had to make all these new friends and I finally had settled in and felt good about that. And, uh, and you're good at making friends. Um, yeah, I wasn't as much back in the day. Now I definitely am more comfortable in my own skin, but I used to be very kind of shy and, uh, not comfortable in those situations. But, um, yeah, so it was either go to this private school and play lacrosse and kind of continue that track or stay with these friends that I had made and find something new. And I decided to do that. And so I was kind of exploring. I needed a new sport. I hadn't played anything different than, or anything other than lacrosse in like the last eight years. So I tried wrestling my freshman year, and I was very small in the beginning of high school. I wrestled in the 112 weight division, so I was uh, probably like 5'10", 
four, one twelve, mm-hmm. long hair, scrawny kid. I've, there's funny pictures. I don't know. I have them somewhere that I can probably pull up. But uh, that was one twelve. Yeah, I was a little dude, <laughs> and I really didn't like wrestling. And it's funny now because the reason I didn't like wrestling is because it was this individual sport, and there was so much pressure. It's one on one. You're like almost fighting another person, and it just made me so overwhelmed with the uh, the pressure i couldn't handle it and you are fighting except there's just some rules yeah yeah right? basically but i i after one season of that i was like i don't want to do that anymore i really didn't enjoy that and i transitioned into swimming because a couple of my friends were on the swimming team did that the most of the swimmers also played water polo so i did that as well really really enjoyed water polo and kind of stuck with that and for the next four years the last three years of high school and then a year in college i played water polo swam did a little bit of diving but mostly all the the water sports and it was how much did you weigh when you graduated when i finished high school i was probably like 150 so i had grown considerably and i started working out probably like my junior senior year of high school i got into back then it's all about like Bench getting rest. jacked and being ripped mm-hmm. and yeah like men's health and all that stuff and curls so, and yep um no squats yeah curls but, but sit-ups. Those machines where you push on the the squat machine where you what is that oh the smith machine smith, smith not even the smith machines what's the one where you lay on your back and there's that tray and you put your feet on it and you push oh it the up. squat oh, the sled uh, no 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 okay. the, the leg press leg press yeah yeah no press. i didn't even do that i didn't oh, do anything with okay. my legs i had okay. small legs <laughs> Um, so 150 and at that point how tall are you five are you five seven now I'm five seven now like five seven plus yeah no uh, no you're not come on yeah <laughs> no. I, in shoes the other day I was five eight so I was like man my shoes aren't I mean that's practically will five nine the, Matt will you open the door and ask Joanne how tall Noah is she knows she's in it let's see what she said I'm interested we'll go with this official how tall is Noah yeah Noah is five seven, five, seven. Okay. yeah it works hey not that's five good. seven plus you guys are definitely dating what? All right. All right. What? <laughs> Go ahead. What? What? what you I was, was going to ask her when I yeah, got. Okay, when, let's open the door. Right, so. Babe, when we were at that store the other day and I stood up against the thing with my shoes on, what did it say I was? Do you remember? Five, eight. Right. The See? Story, the story's consistent. With the shoes. I don't know if my shoes were an inch thick. All right. That seems a little much excessive an inch I thick. Like so maybe you are 5'7". Five, seven, so 5'7 right yeah. plus. Thank you, babe. Hey, you should have said I was staring at your package. So you fucked that up. Yeah, maybe what was that? <laughs> she should have said she was staring at your package. She should have said, I have no idea how to talk about it. I don't remember. Six foot. Yeah. But um, thanks, babe. <laughs> or she should have said he's the perfect height. Oh, the right height. I like that. <laughs> uh, what? I don't even... Here we go. Where were we? Oh, yeah. That's the throwback. Well, so that... Damn! Is, uh, that was when I finally kind of made that transition into playing water polo. So this is, I think, my sophomore year of high what? school. You know where this is going. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm, 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 lo- I'm looking at the ball. I'm like, Good. oh, it's a cap seven. Enjoy like, the ball. Enjoy the ball. Seven. Okay. okay. That's Go on, Noah. Sorry. Matt, no, no, sorry I mean, interrupted. So I don't know if I was 112 at this point. I was probably a little, I was maybe 120 something at that point. Sophomore yeah, you year of high school. Yeah, about 120. Like, um, wh- Eric, where did you find this picture of Noah in Google his underwear? Images. Where? Google? For real? Yeah. Google That's images. Really funny. Did you find a picture? Of I've, I've posted it before because I thought it was yeah, pretty funny. Yeah, I've definitely seen this picture. Does, your, does Joanne want you to take that back. photo down? Uh, um, no, not that I know of. Did you just take a selfie? I did. For you? All right. Yeah. For um, you. Uh, thank you. Uh, she, she's okay with you showing your body like that? Oh, I mean, it's nothing to really oogle over. You know? a, a prepubescent like Speedo <laughs> yeah. shot? It's, that's not... It's. Uh, Do you wear a Speedo today? You know, Matt's not allowed to have photos like that on the internet of himself. No. Like, easy, easy. I, easy. I have, I have We're that exact same that out. Okay, I'm going to edit that out. Probation officer. Yeah, you can just go ahead and start this segment right on. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Savani, really? Welcome to part two. Yeah. Hey, remember, remember his girlfriend was saying, oh, I don't like Savan. You want to you be in that camp? You want to be in that camp too? We're going back, we're going back there. Man, I, uh, we can dive into that later. No, I what you have to say is I want to know more about that. Oh, God. I got nothing. I I have that same speedo, and I tried it on, and it's like a G string now. <laughs> I was gonna say, well, it fits over like one leg. Is there a yeah. photo of that? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. I'm glad there is. Are you crying? I am I crying. Don't cry. <laughs> You're sad for me in that photo. Oh, I'm sad for me for what Matt's gonna do to me when the show's over. <laughs> My last time. That's I'm gonna good. walk out of here being like, that was a great podcast. Bye, everybody. Get decked. That's it. 
Um, okay, so um, do you is, is your speed so for Sam Dancer, Speedo is his go to now. Like he's yeah. like really comfortable. He's in wearing it. one right now. Like as yeah. we speak, he he's is downstairs. That's what he said. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't believe it. I remember trying to wear a Speedo like in between games, like on like a tournament on the weekend. Yeah. And just being so uncomfortable. Yeah. And when he said that he wore one every day, I I couldn't believe it. Yeah. It's weird. I think like as a joke now, I could go to the beach and like buzz like take my bathing suit out and be like, hey, I'm wearing a Speedo and then yeah. just for the rest of the day play it off because it's funny, but I don't think I could actually go somewhere and just wear a Speedo and like not too much attention say anything about it. No, I just, I, I don't know. Like, I'm not, If you went to Brazil, you'd do it, right? If all the dudes maybe, were doing it, you'd do it. I don't know. Right? Like I'm a, not sure. I don't know. Hmm. I just like, <clears throat> it would just be weird. For me, it would be weird. I'm not calling Sam weird. I, no. Like, I mean, he is weird and he embraces that. He's like, totally weird, weird in a good way. He's totally weird. Right. Yeah. But uh, for me, it would just be. Like, let's not judge. Let's just say weird. Yeah. Let's in a good say, way. Let's though. not say good or bad. Not let's good? Not judge. Okay. Let's not all right. All right. <laughs> but yeah, no. Speedo is retired. All, all, all the non-Americans are be like, those fucking conservative morons because the rest of the world probably wears yeah. speedos right yeah but the <laughs> weird thing about a speedo too is like you got an option right you either go down or you pick one of the sides oh tell me about sidewinder yeah you're, really were you a side guy i was oh so because yeah, if you go up the, the helmet side. sticks out you can't go up right no you can't go up it sticks you up definitely go down the middle or one to the side the side is definitely the most comfortable so it kind of fits in that little band right there <laughs> yeah Wow. So that can do permanent damage to people too. You know, if you're always going left, it's eventually naturally it's going to start going <laughs> left without you. <laughs> so, I'm not saying, I'm asking for a friend. And just now, Sam Dancer walked by outside in front of oh. our windows here in the podcast studio in a Speedo. I mean, the timing couldn't have been. And Matt Bickle's in a pair of shorts, and Marsden, who <laughs> a world class filmmaker, didn't he didn't he, he wasn't didn't clothed either. Some, yeah. Something weird was going on down there. They Something were all weird. sweating. Uh, yeah. Just like it's February. Yeah. Um, let's see if we can. Oh, so my so my Instagram isn't populating with. What do you think that people that don't know Sam and Mars and whatever, just people from the outside, what do they think when they see that happening? A giant guy in a speedo, sweaty. Yeah. Another giant guy, and then some other guy that's not wearing a shirt is filming them walking next to each other. They must think it's some sort of gag, right? <laughs> I was thinking that people might think they're like gay lovers, and I don't. Know. I could see that. Even happens. if they think they're gay lovers, they think it's still a gag. Yeah. Like gagging gay lovers. But they're a hundred percent. But they're talking about a different gag. They're a hundred percent dead serious. That didn't come yeah. out with, right. with the way they look. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, I'm cool with that. Yeah, Sam Dancer has a remarkable physique, unique New York. He's actually super lean right now. I don't know if I've ever yeah. seen him that lean. Yeah, he is. He's crazy looking. Yeah. Uh, My physique is on on the the way out. Is Why? it? Why? I saw you in the no, gym today. Kidding. You look great. <laughs> I I'm I'm a little leaner now than I was at the games. I was like, you were chubby at the games. Do you know what Joanne called me the other day? And I could never say this to her, but she said, hey, babe, I was watching the CBS episodes of the games the other day, and you looked kind of pudgy. (laughs) And I was like, Were you 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 taking creatine and a bunch of shit like that? No, I just had, like, purposely eaten a lot leading up to – so from, like, December until the games, I was eating a ton more than I usually did and wanted to put on size because I thought it would help me be stronger. So I went from, like – 185 is where I'm typically at. And at one point, I was 200 pounds when I stepped on the scale. That wasn't what I was at the games. I was probably like 195. But uh, You were officially a man. Yeah, right? It felt, it felt good. It did, it did feel good to be like this little meatball. But when we kind of assessed the games... That's I, so rude. Don't talk about Noah Olsen like that. I can't believe ball. you called him a meatball. Yeah. A meatball. Well, at least totally I call him I'll show pudgy. you one meatball. Maybe as a, tur- um, a turkey. You definitely meatball. weren't pudgy at the games. You're definitely still ripped, but your shoulders look broad as fuck. Yeah, that that's dude's pudgy. You? That's me. <laughs> that's little baby Noah. You are good at your digging. That's impressive. That haircut's amazing. <laughs> that was it. Was the bowl cut? The bowl I cut. dare I, you I to rock that one. shit at uh, the fucking regionals. I don't know, man. Hide your I could kids. actually probably take children. what I've got going on now and just comb it in that direction. It wouldn't look good. It would look very similar to that. You have pretty big arms there. Yeah. How and you still have that. What like, am I like two there? I don't know. <laughs> Look at your torso; it kind of hasn't changed. You have like a really your core is crazy, yeah, dense. I don't yeah. know why Guido is and long talks about that. Is my torso long? Yeah, I mean, just kind of like between your tits and your your 
your <laughs> cock and balls. I'm Tits assuming. Taint. Yeah, it's it's long. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so so that picture right there. You, I thought you didn't do water polo till you were in high school. You, I didn't. Yeah, that's just the, that's na- high the neighborhood pool. This, oh oh. This okay. is high school. That's oh. my, fresh, <laughs> so that's so my that freshman of, year, and the other ones. My so you wore speedo even before you did water polo. What are you talking about? Are you talking about this photo right here? No, no, no. That, you're not wearing a Speedo in that photo. You're I don't fucking know what I'm naked wearing in there. that photo. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> you're talking about the other one. Go to that other photo. Yeah, so you, you said you didn't play water polo until you were in high school. Right. That is high school. The second one. Really? That's high school. That's sophomore year of high school. Okay. Yeah. My nickname <laughs> then was Cutie. Do you have red hair there? Uh, Ish. I think when it was longer and I was in the sun a ton, it definitely was like a red, strawberry, blonde color. Mm -hmm. People have said that on and off, that I'm like a redhead. I don't think now that it's a little shorter and kind of darker. I had the same thing. I had reddish hair when I was Yeah, I can can see like especially in the stash, but... And some of it comes out here. You look like the kid from the Partridge family. uh, 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 Partridge family? Yeah, what's the Partridge... Eric, you want to look at Partridge family? That sounds so familiar to me, but... Maybe it has a Wikipedia page. (laughs) It's a... uh, (laughs) It's a, it's, a, it's a show. It reminds me of the Adams family. <laughs> How the old are you? You're 28. 26. 26. Okay, I'm yeah. 45. Okay. So I'm 19 years older. I'm going to be 46 years If so. you were my dad, when Congrats. did you have me? 20, 45 minus 26. I'm not good at fast. 19? 25 and <laughs> oh, yeah, 20. You, 19, yeah. Wow, that would be cool. It's possible. Yeah. Man, did you know? Ah, never mind. Yeah, tell me. I can't. Why? I don't know if he wants people to know. It's not a bad thing at all, but can we maybe cut this out if he doesn't? No, probably not. Let me just ask you this real quick before you tell me. <laughs> okay. Before you spill the beans on this person. Is it because their parents are so young? Yes. Oh. And is, is games athlete? Yes. Ooh, let's guess. Um, he, hasn't, he hasn't been in a couple years. Since I'm one for one. Oh, God. I'm not to wreck. Peter Edgen. No. He's <laughs> awesome. He's a, a really, really good friend of mine. We have very similar person, uh, kind of similar personality Guido. in some regards. No. Uh, in MBS CrossFit, his... Um, Oh no, probably Peter Edge is one guy. Uh, yeah. when you say hasn't when you say hasn't been to the games in a long time, do you mean not a long time, a few years. You mean as an individual. Right. Oh. Uh, he's still young. I'm guessing out of South South East. Oh, Ronnie Teasdale. No. Is he from Hawaii? No. <laughs> is he from Hawaii? Oh what's Eric, his name? He, he lost his finger this past year. No. No. That wasn't that. I was like a surfer oh, dude sorry. reference. Not that guy's never been to the games, has he? The guy who lost his finger? Chandler, no. Ben Smith. No. Didn't think so. <laughs> anyway. You know other people who have very young parents. And they're games athletes. I know a person who's... Rich's dad can't be that much older than him. Rich's dad looks young. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> this, this young man, his mom had him when she was 13. And then had, I think, four other kids, like, shortly after. Wow. And the parents are still together. They're still, like, a really cool, tight-knit family. Yeah, it's really cool. And that's why I think that I would would say who it is and and why, because he's proud of it, and there's, like, nothing to not be proud of, but Kenny Leverage. Oh. Oh, no way. Yeah. His mom had him when she was 13, I believe. Maybe the best photo I've ever taken of a CrossFit athlete is of Kenny Leverage. Yeah. Is it the dumbbell snatch one? That was you? That's definitely a super famous photo. I tried to recreate that, and it wasn't. Thank you. Not quite. Uh, yeah, you have to be five seven plus to get that. Uh, oh, I am five seven plus. You just got to. You just got to get those shoes. I'm not you plus the plus. You only got five eight. Uh, so, um, so water polo all four years in high school is water polo hard. I always think of it as like being horribly hard. Yeah, it is. It's. I mean, if you're not comfortable in the water, then you're definitely uncomfortable because it's a lot of treading and people pulling on you and swimming. But once you get the hang of it, it's a lot of fun. Did you grow your toenails long so you could? When you're doing an egg beater, you could scratch other dudes in the water. No, no. Some people were mean, though, man. Some people yeah. would, like, put their hands around, like, hook their finger on your Speedo, try to pull it down and knee you and claw you. And uh, it can get pretty nasty. But I I did it more to, like, play the game and play it with skill than with, like, little funky things. What like position that. did you play? Why does this dude want to come in and hang with us? <laughs> I love dogs, so he's more than welcome. But what a shit show this office is! <laughs> he's a little squirrely. It's awesome. A dog just jumped on the door of the podcast. Dude. He wanted yep. to come in and chit chat. Um, uh, what position did you play? I was, man, this is really embarrassing. I can't even remember what the positions are called. Yeah. I, I think I was a wing, like a driver. Yeah, and yeah. you played all four years. Uh, I played three, my final three years of high school, 
and then I played for a full year club at Clemson, and I was starting to play at the club team at Miami, and that was when I found CrossFit. Kind of was doing half and half for a little while and decided to fully commit to CrossFit. I feel like I interviewed you before, and you, you gave me the impression that you were like an endurance athlete, and I guess water polo is, there is an endurance athlete. Yeah, I mean, right? I just had never really done much strength work prior to that. It was I've always played sports that I was running or swimming. What's the longest you've ever run? Distance. Um... It's not like that, if that's what you're thinking. I think maybe five miles at once. And was there ever a time in your life where you ran five miles four days a week? No, ever. Never, oh, never. okay. Wow, for some reason I thought like that's like really like... No. Okay. Not my so dad. you had this, but you had a crazy engine. Water polo makes you build a crazy engine. Matt, do I? does maybe. water polo give you a crazy engine? Yeah. I yeah, think, I, think I think swimming right. in general. Yeah. And you're basically in the water treading water for an hour. I mean, I will say though. I mean, swimming typically being long is advantageous, right? Yeah. So you've got you can pull more for sure. So for shorter guys, it doesn't. It's not. We don't excel as much as like taller people do. Mm. It's like basketball, right? But there's a spot for for, for you. People, yeah. yeah. So 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 you have this engine, um, and you basically just parlay that engine into CrossFit. Two years into college. Yeah. So sophomore year, I was really into health and fitness. That was kind of when I'd started that blog, The Pursuit of Fitness, and. I would what I would, caused that? I was into I don't know I think I had just my dad would always read Men's Health and I started reading some of those and was in I wanted to like be one of the freaking cover models for Men's Health I just wanted to be jacked and uh, and and also starting like realizing that healthy things would help lead to that so starting to eat better and and I got into like all the the hacks you know that's what kind of mm-hmm. Men's Health is like. 10 tricks to build your whatever. Oh, right. 10 things you can eat that help with this. And and then there were a couple books that were like that. There was this guy that I read the book of. I um, can't remember his name right now, but he was very popular at the time. He had a blog and he wrote a book. Man, I can't remember. And then there was uh, Tim Ferriss that wrote The 4-Hour Body, which I also read. And it was a lot of that stuff. And then eventually I did some circuit training because they put like a – the Spartan, uh, what is it? The three, it wasn't the 300 workout. I think that everybody else thinks of, but there was like Mm -hmm. a cutout in a men's health magazine. That was a circuit of 10 exercises. And you do like 15 or 20 seconds all out of this rest for 45 seconds. And And you did this at the gym on campus. Yeah. It was basically an EMOM. And I remember my freshman year. And did you have a crew of dudes you worked out with? Yeah. There were one or two guys that I I got to do that with me. Um, but I really, that was kind of just, exploratory and and then I went mostly back to regular lifting and stuff and then again based off more aesthetics than anything else I saw a poster somewhere in Miami when I was uh, going to the university and it had a a jacked dude running on the beach and that jacked dude is Guido oh and it was an advertisement super jacked yeah super jacked and it was an advertisement for a CrossFit gym and I was like he's got like Dan Bailey muscles right he does he's got like muscles on muscles his arms are like got some weird unusually large yeah and he can also not work out forever and still look the same. Okay. Because there, like last, I don't know, there are a period of times throughout the year where that dude works out maybe once a week just because he has so much other stuff going on and is still super jacked. Okay. But saw that was like, man, I want to look like that dude. If that's what CrossFit does, I'm gonna try it out. I'd heard of it, but I thought it was like a military training program. This is in 2010 for me, and. I called the phone number on the poster. It was Guido's personal cell phone. He said, yeah, we're doing a, a trial workout on Saturday. Come try it out. Walked in, saw the gym, and it had kettlebells, barbells, ropes, just a traditional CrossFit gym, but I'd never seen one had before. Had you still never squatted at this point? I think I had – I remember my friend Josh, like, probably months prior, teaching me a front squat with, like, cross arms. Right. And I probably didn't go below parallel and stuff. But, right. yeah, I had not done much of that at all. Wow. Ever. And so I did CrossFit, and – did pretty well. I was kind of good. I think what my initial appeal to Guido was, was that I picked up on movements really quickly. So like in the first couple weeks, I was able to do a muscle up and could kind of figure out kipping pull-ups right away on like the first day. And um, yeah, that was kind of how it all began. And then eventually when I realized you can compete in this stuff and I wanted to do that, yeah, this is so much throw. I, I, so this is probably that's right. You? Yeah, that's little old me. I realized that uh, realized that I wanted to start getting competitive. I 
started learning extra skills, started doing extra strength work, started recording a bunch of stuff. And is there a date on that video? Because that must be like 2011. You got Nano ones on in there, dude. Old I school, do yeah. not even Let's recognize. See. Twelve. Yeah. May twenty fifth. Yeah. Wow. 12. <clears throat> So that I'm I'm pretty deep into it at this point. Then that's like a year and a half, two years into doing CrossFit that's already. That's pretty aggressive too. Three by ten with ninety second rest. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That so that was kind of my thing when I started. I wasn't very strong, but I was pretty good at the gymnastics stuff. So that was kind of where I was able to. Oh, you're weas- stout there too. Weasel huh? my way into competing, <laughs> <laughs> making funny faces and stuff. Um, and so you know what's actually oh you still do those arm gestures that you're doing there yeah I do that with my legs and my arms just kind of like shake it out yeah. I don't know why but Velner does that does he yeah you know you're competing against him here I do I'm gonna kick his butt I'm excited it's awesome it's gonna be fun he and I are homies please try to slap him in the face should I do that yeah <laughs> no he would get it but nah, you I don't can go know. with the rake I'll think about it <laughs> That's what I mean, the rake. Straight up slap him. No, no, <laughs> no. I mean the hand. I mean the miss yeah. when you did the Fraser. Yeah. Um, so I've realized recently, and I think this can tie back into the misconception from a lot of people. And also what I said before is that I wasn't really as comfortable in my own skin. And I, I like wanted to be cool. Like I wanted to fit in. You know, I'm sure every college yeah, student yeah. kind of feels that way. Yeah. And Oh, yeah. And in Miami... I don't know. I, I kind of, th- I think, took on this persona. I heard a recording of myself recently. What was I listening to? You, dude, you know what it was? The video where you interviewed me at regionals, and I think it was the thing with Dave, and it was where at the year before I had been a volunteer, and I told him I was going to compete. When That's I was, a great story. When That's I was, a great we, story. We can get into that, but yeah. when I was listening to the way I spoke there... I had like a New Jersey, like thick tongue accent. And I was like, (laughs) what in the world was I doing? I sounded like a, I was like, ah, man, I can't even recreate it. But I was like, yeah, I've been eh? doing CrossFit for like two years. And uh, and I I don't don't remember that. I don't know. I don't know why I did that. But I didn't know that I was doing it at the time. And looking back now, I'm like, maybe I was just trying to. Did you smoke weed? No, no, never. It's very weird here. You've never smoked weed. Yeah, no, never. Um, you still sound like that. What are you talking about? Do I? I don't no, think so. I feel no, like I've cleaned no, it up a little bit. No, 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 not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that I think could have been where some people are like rubbed the wrong way by this persona where I was like this young kid and maybe seen as a little cocky because of the way I talked and presented myself just because I wanted. And another thing as well was that in order to like be good, I think you have to believe that you are good. And so I think I tried to like make myself feel like I was the man and and maybe I gave that off and that's why people were turned off, you know? Like at the games my first year in 2014, at some point I was in first place. Yeah, it was this. At some point I was in You f- killed it your first year. I did, man. It was crazy. I honestly that was like my favorite year of competing so awesome, far. Man. I think just getting a whole bunch of UM students in there, introducing them to CrossFit and the lifestyle of it. So last year at Regionals, I was a volunteer, kind of setting stuff up, breaking it down, and uh, I saw that he was there, and I was kind of starstruck by everybody out there. But on a whim, I went up to yeah, him and introduced yeah. myself. Uh, I was like, "Hey, man, I know I'm a volunteer this year. I had volunteer on the back of my this shirt." This year, but, uh, I hear it. Back. Yeah, I, I think you're kind of out of breath games. too. Like, oh, yeah, like you're you're you're, you're excited because yeah. you're like. Like, so interviewed, like, and it's like, like you're kind of nervous. You. I like, yeah, I told you. And you're maybe talking a little year. fast. Oh, my God. I don't think it's that bad. And that was it. I'm here. I'm man of my word. Will you pause this for a second, Eric? So let's leave this up here, and let's... let's. That's you right there, buddy. We don't that's, like... That's your thumb. It's a beautiful thumb. It is. It's nice. Um, let's not forget where we were in the history, but tell us... We are looking at the two... This is at the 2012 regional. Right. It's Dave Castro... A young Noah Olson and a young Sevan Matosian, and tell us what's happening. Very young Sevan. So I don't even know if Dave was the one that I guess recognized me and grabbed me and said, hey, Sevan, come here. But the year prior, 2011, I had tried to qualify. I did the Open, and I missed it. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to go up there and watch Guido compete because he was my my guy. And uh he was kind of like, I don't know if I'd say my idol, but he was definitely the guy I looked up to. And so I went up there to watch him compete, and I decided, you know what, I'll get a free ticket to regionals. May as well go volunteer so I can get in. And I volunteered and helped kind of move the equipment around, set the stage up for different events. And 
I saw Dave Castro and I knew who he was. He wasn't the Dave Castro yet, but he was Dave Castro, you know. And uh, I ended up sitting next to him during one of the events. I think I think it was Dave, myself, and then Guido's wife, Virginia. And just chit-chatting, and I, I, I was saying it over and over in my head. I knew I wanted to say it to him. And then right before he left, I was like, hey, by the way, I'm volunteering this year, but next year I'm going to compete out there. Like I, I, don't, I don't know why I'm telling you, but just putting it out there, just so you know. And, and he was the one that remembered that, I guess, as far as I remember. He totally it. remembered it. Yeah. I was competing. I think it was in between events. I was walking through this little vendor village area, and he grabbed me and grabbed you and was like, hey, tell that story. You last year said you were going to do that, and you're competing now, right? And I said, yes, sir, I am. And uh, Dave said he's heard that 100 times. Yeah. No one's ever done it. That's cool. That, though, probably was like the a time it was okay to do that. You could be a beginner then and kind of sneak in. I would say now it's probably tough for somebody to say, hey, I just started, but I'm going to be a regionals athlete next year just because there's, there's so much more awareness with the sport. There's so many more people competing, you know. Leaf, who's the head of um, – uh, now we're going to go on a digress even further. Cool. Leaf, who is the head of publishing here at CrossFit Inc. and shares the office over here. Yep. Um, uh, is his last name Erickson? Edmondson. Edmondson. Um, he I, – I made a video in 2010, the Tahoe Throwdown, and I, I wrote The Dave Castro. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, you fucked up here, and you wrote The Dave Castro. And you're like, no, I And didn't. I'm like, no, no, I did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. And that's my story. His story is, is that – I fucked it up, and he told me to leave it in there. Uh, oh. He tried to take credit. Yeah, my story is, is I never it's heard not that. fucked up, and I did it on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, we were just fighting about it. It's that funny yesterday. that Dave took it and ran with it, though. A co-worker started said, that for him. Hey, um, don't do that. Don't call him the Dave Castro. It's going to make his head only bigger. Perfect. So I told Dave that, and Dave, Dave wasn't into it, yeah. the Dave Castro, until I told him that. Yeah. And... Yeah, he yeah. said, "Keep it for sure. I'm going with this <laughs> for shit. sure. Fuck that guy. <laughs> that sounds like Dave. Definitely. Yeah. So that's cool. Um. So you, so you, um, you, you actually stopped two two years in at the University of Miami. You basically, did you were you planning on stopping water polo anyway, or you stopped it because CrossFit started taking up too much of your time? More of that. I okay. didn't think I was going to play professional water polo. Like I didn't think it had any place in my life, rather than just being a hobby and fun. But at that point, it was I was still going to practice for two hours every single day and then going and working out and still doing schoolwork. So it was just kind of too much. And I was had to decide, like, do I want to keep doing this CrossFit thing or do I want to keep doing water polo? And I decided that I wanted to explore the CrossFit a little bit more, and I'm very glad that I did. And have your parents started CrossFit at this point? No. Okay. No, and they didn't start until like your, a couple years ago. And does your sister do CrossFit? She did for a summer, but it's not – her jam. I mean, I, I could see her doing it to stay in shape, but she's definitely not competitive by any means. But she doesn't belong to an affiliate. When she's, does she work out at your parents' gym? She actually lives up in Boston. Oh, when she comes home, though, she, you could imagine her working out there? Uh, Maybe. Once or twice. Yeah, def I, I don't know if I could see her being a long-time member. I, I'd have to probably do a little convincing, and if it was a very convenient situation like that, where there was a gym close to her that she'd be Is able to Is she in to. shape? Is your sister... She is, yeah. I, she, I don't think she does too much working out now. She used to be on the swimming and water polo team with me in high school as well. You're um, not concerned about her health when you see her? No, 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 not at all. But I mean, I, of course, I'd love her, love to see her like moving and grooving and doing something. But we don't need to do an intervention, do we? No, I don't think it's at that point yet. <laughs> Maybe someday. But no, she's good. She's doing her own thing. Do you own these? What are those? These are these Apple earpods. I don't. Earpods. No, I saw buds. Jimmy Fallon say that it looks like a little cigarette butt sticking out of your ear, mm. and that kind of turned me off. You said something a little nasty earlier that we don't have to say. On <laughs> someone told someone told me that it looks like I've been cream pied. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really, I don't really like that. You don't even know what that means, do you? I don't really like that look. <laughs> have you tried it on before? <laughs> <laughs> Brody. So Matt, are you just staring at Savon's bulge? Like it's kinda You know, to be honest, I've I've glanced upon it so many times in this exact room, I don't even notice it <laughs> Yeah. I just <laughs> caught a quick look and I was like, that's right in Matt's line of vision. Yeah, especially right. when he wears the cords, it, it accentuates it. Yeah, definitely. So I have, a sock, I have a sock in there. Um <laughs> one of his kids socks. <laughs> Is that Rory walking down there? That's a lot of man. 
Roy yeah. McKernan. He's a stud. Yeah, they got a great podcast. The Row, the Row and Row. Oh, is that Woodland's dog? The Pat and Row show. We have windows here in the podcast studio, and we're yeah. looking out. Yeah, that uh, is his dog. Completely, the show's going to shit. No, it's good. He's I, think, I think as long as you paint this dog. picture, you're fine. Um, Rory and Pat, someone said that their show is the... Um, you guys see that? Sean's taking a selfie with his dog right now. I wonder if we'll see Oh, that. God, it's awesome. Is that Sean Woodland, the voice, <laughs> the voice of CrossFit? The voice, yeah. Him and his big, meaty bulldog are taking a selfie. Just a typical Wednesday for El Woodland out there. Good thing he's in here working hard, prepping if, games. If you guys shit. are listening to this podcast, go back and look at Sean's Instagram and see if he posted a selfie. Comment something. At like Sean Woodland. Yeah. He may be, oh man, there's so many nice dudes over there in the games department. I was going to say he may be the nicest guy in the games department, but they got Wilson Tang. 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 Yeah. yeah, there's at, a lot of nice at dudes. The President Tang. He's really nice. Yeah. Are there some not nice dudes here? You don't have to say who they are, but are there a couple of like... I, huh. There's no one who's not nice. No, there's no one I would like try to avoid at all costs. There's yeah. just people who are in their twenties. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? I'm 33. Okay, but I'm technically a millennial. How old are you, yeah. Eric? I still fall. 95 what? is the cutoff I heard recently. Yeah, well, 95 is the bottom. I want to say like, I was born in 84, and I think 82 is like the other end. I call myself a shepherd millennial. Shepherd. I feel like I need to like lead the way for the millennials. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of responsibility. I like that. <laughs> What's up, big guy? You got something to say? Your first year in the Open is 2013. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We're just talking about regionals in 2012. Sorry, go, sorry, right? Your first year, my math. In the Open, my first. Your first year in the Open is 2011. 11, yes. And how did you place? I think I came in like a hundred and I, this sounds funny because it's very specific and I said I think but 114th in the world no 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 I don't know in the world I'm not really sure so you probably should, look that up so you actually should. I think I did that recently I'll, I'll tell you right now okay I okay. just made a and then in 2012 you finished <clears throat> high enough that you got to go to the regionals correct and you went to the regionals and you took what place I'm gonna you could actually I don't know if you want to pull it up on here but if you want to take a little peek at noolson.com, <laughs> I've got a uh, yeah, yeah, no competition Olson. history section. Well, I, we just built out the website. Do so. you remember which regional event was your best in 2012? In 12, either Diane that was or... was the first one, event one, right? Yeah. Do you have a website? It was a heavy... Yeah, I just created it. I just cool. remember because I remember... It feels silly, but... That was that, no, that, was that 100-pound dumbbell and then the It was sprint. a heavy year, and I was not yeah. strong yet then, so it was tough for me. The shoulder overhead and pull up one I did okay on. Oh, that's something I want to talk about. The, uh, so um, the don't let me forget. Industry. I want to talk about like, because oh, yeah, we yeah. talked about this with Patrick Vellner, the development of squatting. Since you didn't squat, you're a really interesting test subject, right? Yeah. Like, what is your squat now? Go to the competition history, little subsection. My squat now, I've done 445. And my first squat was in 2011, 10. Because Vellner said that's the hardest <clears throat> thing to build is the strength. Yeah, I think so. And Unless for me. And that's pretty crazy, right? Was that depressing for you? Were you like, oh, fuck, I can never win the games because my, my back slot's 135 and I'll never be 400. Yeah, pounds. I've had those thoughts for sure. Like I, I was talking the other day. Sometimes when you do like a clean pull or a snatch pull, it's unfathomable that you'd be able to actually snatch or clean that weight. And I remember taking 300 pounds once like five years ago and doing a clean pull and thinking there's no way there's no way i'll ever be able to catch this on my shoulders and now i can clean 365 so it just it happens slowly but surely if you go down a little bit i think are you still getting stronger yeah you are i think so i hope so you're 26 it still feels young doesn't it yeah so the open i took 1320th in the world in 2011 okay um, yes, yesterday when uh, you came over to the house and we were hanging out and I, and we were throwing around some ideas of future projects to do together and you said, yeah, I'm game for whatever yep. while this window's open. Do you feel, what do you, what do, what do you mean by this window? Uh, just like while the, what do they say? Strike while the iron's hot. I don't know. While I'm, while I'm competitive in the sports still, while I'm physically healthy and just kind of doesn't take you an hour to warm up like you. <laughs> right. No, I mean, I actually was Good thinking point. the other right. day, um, like, how long do I want to do this? And I, I want to win the games, and I don't know. There's not really, like, a time frame on that. You can probably do that. I would say probably within the next three years is a good time to do it physically, and then after that I'll be getting close to 30 and 30 plus. And not, I'm not saying that you're not competitive at that point, but... You're not winning shit. I don't know. Nobody has done it yet. Right. So I would like to, I think, I don't know why this number popped in my head, but I think I want to compete at the games for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I've already done four. Wow. So I have six more. Mm. 
which is crazy to think that my car- my game's career is not even halfway over. I don't know if that's realistic either. I don't know if that'll end up playing out and being the case. Right. But but just the thinking out loud. Yeah, yeah. kind of. I was just like that window. Um, so I, I would be 32 for my last my tenth games if I were able to qualify in a row like that. I think uh, I think I look rich is 30 and Matt Fraser right now is 28. Mm-hmm. That actually just reminded me, uh, uh, kind of tying back into what we talked about earlier, one thing that I think I said in 2014 that I said wrong and was like th- turned a lot of people off at the intro dinner that we had. They had all the athletes stand up and go around and say your name and how many years you've competed at the games. And I said, no, Olsen, and this is... I I don't know if I said hopefully or just said my first of many. Uh Mm -hmm. So imagine if somebody that you've never seen before stands up and they're like, yeah, Yeah. this is my first of many games. People are going to be like, who the fuck is this guy? Mm. So in my head, what I meant to, like I didn't mean it as this cocky, bold statement. I kind of meant like like I'm I'm going for this. I'm all in. Like you guys can expect to see me here. Hopefully it's my first of many appearances. It speaks to your personality. You're You're an optimistic person. Yeah. So did and you get feedback saying that that was cocky? <laughs> I well, in I think later on I remember somebody saying that I had said that and I was like, "Oh, I get it. I could see how that's not awesome." But did they tell you as they reminded you that like, "Hey, that stuck in my head that you were kind of a prick?" Yes. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing how sensitive it's it's Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. I think it's totally fine. Um <laughs> so so that year 2000 um 11 you 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 finished 1100th and or 1300 1300th in the Worlds, open yep. 2012 you finished 24th at regionals that that's the regional oh, I, I didn't grab oh, the stat so on you went to the regionals the but you didn't qualify, qualify for, the for the games right okay i wasn't even close to be honest and then did you ever do performance enhancing drugs in those years no no i've never done them in any years not none no you're okay with the accusations are there accusations i don't know yeah sure I actually I've taken protein and creatine and fish oil and I one time took I don't even know if this is bad colostrum have you ever heard of that somebody had it and I tried it it's like is that what you put in your lips like to make them look sexy <laughs> Coll- I, did, I did that yeah <laughs> is that a performance enhancing drug depends on what your career depends is depends on what the profession is exactly yeah, yeah. I don't know what colostrum is it sounds like something like they have to kill sharks for or something. <laughs> it doesn't sound good it's the the like first couple weeks of milk from a pregnant mother oh yeah 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 so uh, my kids love that shit. okay (laughs) yeah yeah or did yeah Yeah, i remember the colostrum they have like bovine colostrum Uh is cow Mm -hmm. and one of my friends got that and i took it's just supposed to be like very nutrient dense okay and so i would say that's like the so you pop for colostrum i didn't pop i've never (laughs) true or false when ricky garrard popped for some banned substance the accusations on your Instagram exploded or people started be throwing stones at the Noah Olson house and Noah Olson contacted CrossFit HQ and said, test me every fucking week. So true or false? True. Ish. Oh. Right after, right Bad after the ass. whole Ricky I thing. I love you for that, by the way. It wasn't <laughs> when I heard that. I was like, yeah, no, it wasn't, it wasn't people. necessarily <laughs> just me. It mm-hmm. was just all of the comments on the general post on Facebook, whatever, all the outlets that were saying, Obviously, everybody, like all the top guys take, why are you guys surprised? Blah, blah, blah. Just everybody saying that every, all of us take steroids. And I was like, man, it's just so frustrating that we were just talking about earlier when people make these claims that are false, but they're so dead set in their minds that it's true. And I was like, I'll prove all of these suckers wrong right now. Like, I will take a, I said what I wanted, I text Dave and Justin Berg and I said, I want to do a live, Instagram live of getting whether it's blood or pee or whatever i'll get tested every week throughout the whole season do like a little documentary piece on it to prove to people that not a hundred percent of the top guys in the games are on anything because i mean that would improve it for everybody right but that would you'd be able to say hey look there's this is this guy came in fourth last year we tested him all year he wasn't taking anything this is a clean top level crossfit games athlete I don't know. I thought that would be kind of cool, but I love the idea. Yeah, I love the idea. Did you, have you seen Icarus? Yes. So basically, my walk away from that movie. Some people's walk away from that movie is just holy shit, everyone's a cheater. My walk away from that movie is just like holy shit, it's impossible to fucking cheat unless you 
because the, yeah, the like test is unless amazing. You have the government unless you have an entire country yes. back. Yes, yeah, you have to, to have that. someone steal the fucking sample. Yeah, and like you don't have access to the fucking lab. No. Yeah. You don't. You're not fucking Putin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like only Putin can do that. Right. And tr- Senor Trump. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna I, have a great Olympic team this year, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that there are ways to like. Uh, maybe not be taking it at the time. I guess they call it like cycling. So you could be taking it for a certain point, stop taking it when you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be tested. But sounds risky as fuck for sure. And there's random testing all the time. So I don't know how you'd be able to time that out. Because if Sam Dancer says he gets ran, he's on some list, cross oh, yeah. list, and he's well, getting tested all the time. I haven't been tested that much randomly, but there have been like three or four times throughout the past. Were couple you at years. the Invitational this year? Yes, I got tested there. You were surprise tested there. Yep, I got tested at Wadapalooza a couple of years ago at ECC once. I think when you're there's expecting, a, you're going to be in the open against Vellner, you have to assume you're going to get tested for there, sure. right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm never worried about it. I don't have to think about it because I know, like, yeah, like I said, test me any day, and mm-hmm. I'm comfortable with knowing what I've taken and eaten, all that stuff. Cross that off. We talked about spiel. We <laughs> talked about steroids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it true that you were in porn? No. Oh, okay. Is that 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 no, no, no. Yeah, no, I was like, wait no. a second. Is, is, is that the video? Is that college gym? Is that your final answer? <laughs> it's actually, if you go, there's a subsection on my website. Yeah, Eric, let's go incognito search for that one. That wasn't colostrum you were taking. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> a lot of nutrients there. So, 2013, you still, you, you finished seventh at the regional. Yeah, so that Not was. Not good enough to go. No, but that was kind of like my breakout year even though i didn't qualify for the games that was where i was like oh wow i can do this i i'm hanging with the big dogs i was in first place for a little bit and so that surprised the crap out of me like after day one it was that year we had um i can't remember oh the first event was jackie which was a good one for me because it wasn't heavy Mm -hmm. It was the through at max overhead squat which was awesome for me because that was the overhead squat is like the only lift then that I could hang with the big dogs on for some reason, just positionally, I was always Oh, I think good I remember that. It was from the ground. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then right after, 30 burpee muscle-ups for time. So that's day one. Those are really good events That for was me. just Matt gratuitously showing off that he remembers the event. I hope you know that, that he said it's from the ground. I competed that year. That's why I remember. Did you? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Another on, on gratuitous show-off. This <laughs> one's California. worthy, though. Humble brag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. California. Holy shit. Or the uh, North Cal. Let's just individual? transition the podcast and talk about that. You yeah, individual, let's, let's talk about Matt? Can we adjust the lights here? Yeah, change no, it up. No, on a team. Oh, whatever. 12 and Never 14. Mind. 12 and 14. Anyways. Okay, so so when you say you could hang with the big dogs, who took first at that regional? Um, That year, it ended up being Zach Anderson. But I was in first after day one, beginning of day two, and then the last event on Saturday was a deadlift box jump. My deadlift was my absolute worst event. I knew I wasn't going to do well, but I didn't think I was going to take last place, and I didn't even finish the event. I took last and that you took last out of 50 athletes yeah i believe so i'm pretty sure hey, that's um there's a term for that sucks shit the bed yes pretty much well that i didn't shit the bed because i expected it like it wasn't like this oh man he could have done that but he didn't do well it was like i knew i wasn't gonna do well there and wow so i i bumped down to i think to fifth the next day i had a really good morning went back up to third so i still could have qualified but the final event had squat cleans at 225, and not only was that still heavy for me, but my back was destroyed from the deadlifts the day before, mm-hmm. and it just all fell apart. And uh, so I went into the last event in third, could have qualified, finished in seventh, was really disappointed. I, man, I remember <laughs> this is kind of mean because we've talked well about him before, but I walked off my finish mat over to where my parents were, and they were emotional. I could tell they were like really hurt and disappointed for me, and they could tell I was too. And my dad asked, like, what if, I guess if you're not in the moment, you wouldn't know it, but the worst question you can ask somebody in something like that is, what happened? He said, oh, he said, what oh, happened? I did that to Josh Bridges at the games this yeah, year. Yeah, dude, that's the worst. Because you're like, what do you mean what happened? You just watched it. I felt like, wow. ugh, it's the worst. It just doesn't feel good. And I was like, dad, come on, man. Is that going to be your go-to question for everybody at the games this year? I blamed it on Dan <laughs> Bailey. I think I walked up to Josh Bridges and they go, "Hey, Dan wants to know what happened." Oh yeah, that's pretty good, right? Oh, I blame th- it on Dan. I just saw something on Instagram about that. Like, maybe, maybe maybe it was in the behind the scenes this year. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Josh can give me this look. Of oh, didn't fucking causes fucking my. Didn't you guys up. 
Didn't you guys can scare me sometimes? Send him that question, and he took a video saying "fuck off" or something. <laughs> yeah, basically, Matt, right. and, Matt, Matt, and Josh Bridges, that. Matt and Josh Bridges were in London doing some promo right, for right, their right. for their shoe company, whatever that like Vans or whatever they promote, and um, <laughs> and uh, Doc Martens. I can't remember. You can look it up on the Skechers. internet. Sketchers. Sketchers, yeah. That's why Matt has such a nice butt. He wears those like <laughs> shape ups. Sketchers. Yeah, the shape. Toners. The, oh, uh, <laughs> so they're overseas in London, and I, and I know they're together. So I send Matt a text saying, Hey, do you think Josh, because I know he's peeping Josh and working out with him all week, do you think Josh is going to make it to the games this year? Oh, so this and, is separate. Okay. And no, that, that's what that was. Yeah. And so he doesn't even answer me. He must just ask Josh that right. and get Josh's response. And right. Josh's, Josh says, Go fuck yourself. Yeah. You it, right? <laughs> yeah, I posted it. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> But so that was close. Who Didn't took? Who was second on the podium that year? It was Zach Anderson, Travis Mayer, Daniel Petro. Oh, so Travis Mayer, oh, who's now right. your training yeah. partner. Yep. Wow. So he's on the he's on your radar at that point. That was the first and last time that Punk beat me. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I don't know if that's true, but he must have smashed the deadlift workout. He's got a yes, deadlift yeah, his deadlift's fantastic. He's pinner though. He might have taken first on that one that year. I don't he's, know. What what is he? He's Five eleven one fifty seven. Yeah, he always jokes that he it looks like a PE teacher. Like he's got a very <laughs> he looks like a world body. class triathlete. But it's almost even more impressive, right? That he's able to to do all that stuff and not be yeah jacked and just have a nice smile. Yeah, he's jacked. Yeah, I mean he's definitely in shape for yeah, sure. Yeah, but he's he, like, no guido. He doesn't have the eight pack, and right. he didn't, if if he flexes really hard and like pulls his skin down, I think he's got him there, but. Um, yeah, nah, Travis is my my buddy now. Well, um, and then and then look at look at look at your anyone who can see this like you got this eleven, twelve, and thirteen just kind of mashed in one column, and then and then all of a sudden you're big time. Two thousand fourteen. Yeah. So you show up at the CrossFit Games. Yep. Um, you take. Why does it say 2017 CrossFit Games, eighth in the world? Yeah, that, <laughs> that is a typo that I forgot we didn't fix. Yet. Okay, I'll well, ignore uh, that. So, babe, but, you, Joanne. but you did take eighth in the world there. <laughs> yes, so 2014 uh, Games, eighth. So you in take the eighth in the world, you pat Spieler on the head and call him Spieler. <laughs> I mean, you don't remember, right. but it was um, viewed as negatively in, in right. all the athletes who <laughs> hated you. But since then, 80% of those guys have retired. Because you disrespected their icon, for sure. I think that's fair assessment that's, of that. Yeah, not far off. I mean, you, 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 everyone in the office knows is now you know. Yeah, good. That was the first year that like a new wave of us came in. Me, Matt, Jacob Hepner, Will Morad. Um, will, who, will Will Morad ever make it to the games again? I think he definitely can. Yeah, he's so he was really close last year. At Wadapalooza last year, he had like this freak, I don't know if you wouldn't call it an accident, but he ended up having to go to the hospital, had kidney failure, and then he took the whole year off and has just kind of gotten back into training. But he's a freak, man. He's so strong. He's so efficient. He snatches 315 like every day. He's also amazing at gymnastics. His running is amazing. Like he has all the pieces. I think he's just got to put it back together and have the confidence in himself that he can do it. Yeah. He's profoundly optimistic, right? Will, yeah, he's a really good dude. Yeah. I like him a lot. Yeah. I, rem I just remember him at one of the regionals hanging with him, and yeah. he was very, very optimistic. I was hoping for that. He clicked yeah. the little heart button down there. He, these three dudes. Eric, is this your, do you go from your personal Instagram account when you look at these people? Yeah. Where else would uh, you go wh from? What else would I use? Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Yours. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these, uh, Travis, Will, and I are going to be doing all of the open workouts together, except the second one. But uh, Will is going to stay up at Training Think Tank where Travis and I both are now and do the open with us. So for five it should, weeks. Should be fun for five weeks. Yeah. CrossFit cool. Training Think Tank. It's I don't know if Think Tank is affiliated. He better be. It's it's within. <laughs> You'll never passion. win the games if he's not. Come Let it be on. Known. I mean, I just I'm just telling you that's the way the heavens and gods work. Got it. All right. Cool. Isn't I feel like Fraser is unaffiliated, but totally he's totally affiliated. Ben Bergeron's his daddy. <laughs> Daddy, isn't it, actually they call Matt O'Keefe dad. Oh, uh, yeah. Is right. he your agent too? No, he's my buddy though. I like Matt. Um, I have no idea about Matt. He's yeah. I was just kidding. I, I think he works out. I think he's his affiliates cross at Mayhem now. No, yeah. <laughs> Everybody. It's interesting. Um, have you ever have you ever gone to 
uh, Cookville and paid homage to the champ? I did, and I never worked out with him. Like he just wasn't there. So we did a we did a camp for it was way back in the day. It was like in the, what was it called? Two thousand what? Uh, twelve or thirteen or something like that. So maybe? you still hadn't been to the games? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. No, you weren't I, really I, worthy I then. Have. No. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't know. But it was like me, Guido, Jeremy Kinnick. Um, I don't know. There was a group of us. Talena was there, and they were doing a camp that was hosted at Mayhem. And it was a few days. And at the end, we ended up going to his dad's place. And we did, like, the slip and slide. And we all shot guns because I think it was 4th of July. It was the first gun I'd ever shot. And, yeah, that was the only time I'd ever been out there. When you said you went to a camp, it was like a Rich Froning training camp? No, it wasn't. It had nothing to do with him, theoretically. I think oh, they were just okay. like using his space because he was friends with Ryan McKenzie. Okay, and, yeah. who was doing the camp. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was like, that's weird you didn't work out with him if it's right. his training camp. Okay, cool. And since then, you've never been back? To Mayhem. No, I haven't. You've never gone to Cookville to just to to get some of the mojo? No. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if, I don't know if, uh, yeah, I don't know. Everyone's welcome to it's, get the mojo. I think it seems to be what people are doing. Yeah, I mean, it's I would go get the mojo if I, if, I, if, I, if I thought like, would you? I don't know if I would. Fuck yeah! There's, plenty, thought, of, there's plenty of athletes all around the world you can go train with. And when was the last time Rich won the games? If that's, I mean, that's what you're getting at, right? I think that it's not. Yeah, I think that it's a spe- he's a special, unique human being. Yeah, I think so too. And that you can get some mojo off of it. It's possible. I don't know if I would move there for the mojo, but I'm sure you could learn stuff from him. For uh, yeah, I wouldn't move there for the mojo either. Yeah, unless it was guaranteed. Yeah, guaranteed mojo, like Guaran- mojo in your face. <laughs> guaranteed <laughs> mojo. Oh, oh, I think only one person gets. Well, anyway, <laughs> and you're not gonna marry him. Um, uh, I wasn't suggesting you marry him. I don't. I don't think he would uh, marry you. <laughs> be into that. No. 2015, you, what year do, did you win the Open? 16. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. 2015, you win the Waterpalooza Fil- uh, Film Festival? <laughs> yes. uh, you win the Waterpalooza the documentary Fitness the Festival? So that's got to be hugely confidence building. Yeah. It, like, is that your first, is that your first like, win of a, like a, of a, I mean, because that's a legitimate event. Yeah, for sure. Going into, like, well, 2014 was my first confident like i won regionals and i was like all right oh you did win the region this is super oh, okay. cool i'm 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 a games athlete i deserve to be there i felt confident in that especially with my performance at the games i felt like it wasn't a fluke i didn't go in with any expectations and to finish top 10 i was like oh okay i think i should like really commit to this i could be really good and then uh yeah 2015 i think if you look at it is Look at that Dubai Fitness Challenge. You went to the, that's the UAE. So that was a really really good season for me outside of the games. And then even in 2016, um, I didn't go to Dubai that year. But I like had these awesome off seasons and then just couldn't put it together at the games. And that's always been kind of frustrating. That wait, like, you're saying so eighth in the world is not that wasn't good for that season. Yeah, no, I mean it was underwhelming to like these are probably two of the biggest out of season sanctioned mm-hmm. competitions plus ECC and I think I took second that year there but to like win those two big things against a bunch of games guys win regionals again I was like alright it's time like I just gotta put the pieces together I can mm-hmm. do it I've done it before kind of like in other realms now I just need to do it and so I didn't do it and was like so Man. did you expect to win the games or was that was that an expectation that you put on yourself going into the game yeah definitely like I I, I didn't expect like, I wasn't going in saying alright I'm winning the games this year but I was like I can and should be able to get because I what I'm getting is I don't think a lot of well no, I could be wrong I don't think a lot of athletes going into the games have that expectation yeah or say they do but really believe it so I was definitely that year probably the most confident 14 I was like I don't know I'm gonna do this my first time 15 I was like I did well last year surprisingly I know what to expect I'm ready I'm freaking gonna I can only go up from eighth, right? And that obviously wasn't the case. 2016. I you were really fun to film with in 15. Yeah, that was the. Was that was that the orange year? 
I don't remember, I so. but I really yeah. enjoyed you that year. Thank you. Yeah, and I think that was the the beach run where what's his, um, Chad McKay, the unit, and I had the sprint off. Oh, right. Yeah. And then the yeah, yeah, wheelbarrow. Yeah, yeah. Right. So those are oh, two like oh, dramatic yeah. things. One yeah, really good, wheel- one really bad. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But so so just to let everyone know, in 2015 there was an event where tell us about the wheelbarrow event. It was the sandbag thing where you had to run the sandbags across the stadium, load up a wheelbarrow, and transport that across. And like the only thing that you like didn't want to happen that would completely ruin the event for you was having the wheelbarrow tip over. And I think it because it's ha- like starting from scratch. Yeah, definitely. So you do all this. It's not like something like that. It's like an equipment malfunction almost can't really happen in other events. You know, it's kind of you do the work, and if you fatigue, then whatever. But that was like a. I wasn't fatigued. It was just like a mistake thing. And mm-hmm. and you were in the final event. I mean, the final heat. Yeah, final heat. I had yeah, just finished watching. third on the first event. I was like super confident. And that was just like, uh, I literally got in the car with Joanne that night and cried. And I was like. No, you didn't. Yeah. I was like, should I stop? Cut that. <laughs> like not not bald cried but like had tears no no it's my fine to cry it's fine to cry I'm, I'm tr- it's fine to cry it's and fine. I was like man I babe I was I do you was, cry every I, year at the games no I think that was the only time you cried last year did I I mean I didn't see you but I I know you did when you went home mm, I was uh, it was a similar feeling like having it right there and having it taken away is is more difficult than being super far away right and that was that situation too because I was thinking in fifteen minutes I'm gonna win. I can win. I finished awesome this morning. Like, keep the ball rolling. I didn't want to finish outside of the top 10 or 5, I think. And I took, like, 34th on the wheelbarrow. So I was like, it's over. What's the point of even Mm -hmm. trying? I I said I didn't want to finish outside of the top 10. Boom, day one, I'm 34th. Like, What does she say to you when you're in the car crying? She's awesome. I don't remember specifically what she said then, but she's really, really good at, like, knowing the right things to say to me and just kind of keeping me in the zone. I've had other years where I kind of get like at regionals have gotten gotten when I don't perform well that I kind of like snowball down that way and when I do perform well I ride that emotion so whichever way I'm performing I am very dependent on that like that uh plays into my emotion and psychology so when I'm doing really poorly or not as well as I want to my brain just starts going crazy and i'm like maybe i'm not cut out for this i don't know how much longer i want to oh, compete really? this at is a so competition much you'll go there only if i'm doing bad amazing if i'm doing good i'm like this is awesome we're partying this weekend celebrating let's go have dinner with our family like tomorrow i'm gonna kick ass and i just ride that wave and when i have to like pull myself out of it i have a little bit of a tougher time but joanne has always been able to help me do that you're lucky man yeah definitely for sure she doesn't say don't cry no no. I actually so I this is like a, a definitely a tangent I don't know if we're wasting time talking about it but it's talking about crying so my best friend in high school Kevin Garcia died in a car accident when I was so we were both 17 and that like I've never cried more in my life like that whole month was just like the weirdest all of our friends and our whole school was so wrapped up in that and very painful and I almost feel like I cried myself out there. And I kind of realized a few years down the road, like I haven't cried in years for anything. And the only thing that makes me cry, which sounds very strange and I almost feel guilty about it, is like movies and TV shows can make me cry. Have you ever seen the show This Is Us, anybody? I don't know if I should be embarrassed. It's such a good show. Really, really good, really relatable. Pretty much every episode makes me tear up a little bit. But I haven't had like a real life event that has made me emotional enough to cry in a long time. Eh, my Seeing my mom with uh, my family dog, Sam, like dying in her arms, that was super, I, I don't know why I'm going deep into this, but yeah, that made going. me cry. To see her that hurt and in pain was tough. But outside of that, I haven't had anything. And that was only a year ago. Up to that point, I don't think I'd cried for anything just because I was so cried out. I think from this, that's uh, my tattoo is kind of in tribute to Kevin. It's These are my four best friends, Noah, Alex, Kevin, Eddie, and Daniel. So the, mm. the naked boys. Mm. Um, Garcia. Yep. How did he, how, what happened in the accident? 
It was a solo car accident. He was, it was late. There was a party at his girlfriend's house and her mom was coming home, and, like surprised them with coming home. So everybody left and the girlfriend, his girlfriend at the time was like freaking out, panicking that she was gonna get in trouble. So he turned around to come back and like comfort her and just on his way back, it was dark and late and it was a winding road and he hit a tree and went into a coma for a little bit and ended up dying after a couple of days. Yeah, it was heavy. Yeah, at 17 too, it was just like, mm -hmm. I would never experienced anything like that. Yeah, you remember the funeral? I remember everything, yeah. We, we all, we like slept in the hospital the three nights that he was there and yeah. Damn. Yeah. Uh, the tattoo looks better on your arm than in that photo. Cool. Thank Look you. Look at that bicep. I, is that also just uh, <laughs> like a Google image? Yeah. I don't even remember Google taking images. that photo. Are you pushing up on your bicep from the back? <laughs> no. Does it look like it? No. <laughs> Got the, hey, look at the that peak, baby. The look at that. that. <laughs> I like that. But I'm pushing. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, it's like a little camel hump. <laughs> looks kind of weird. Do you store anything in there? No. Should I? Should make a little uh, what, fanny pack up on the bicep? I wear a fanny pack at the game. Yep. Sam Dancer's buddy was wearing a fanny pack, by the way. Matt Bischel? No, the guy with uh, Down syndrome. I noticed him and I were the only oh, yeah. James. 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 Elijah Muhammad wears them all the time. It's oh, kind of like a trendy thing. It's coming it back. It is? Yeah. Oh, shit. I yeah. almost think... bought one, and I was like, ah, I can't do it. It's, like, it's, like, it's like a hip thing now. Yeah, for oh, sure. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Never would have called you trendy, Savan, but you entered that realm now. Now you know. Okay, so so uh, you go to Dubai, you win the fitness challenge there in 2015. You win that with the Wadapalooza thing. I just had a really good off season and okay games performance. You took eighth in the world. You fucked up on the wheelbarrow yeah. event. Um, it, 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 is that your worst finish ever at a CrossFit Games uh, event? Um, 34th? Honestly, I think I finished worse this year on the, the rope climb event. Okay. Which we'll talk about later. Yes. Um, but that was awesome how you came out. I was so stoked for you. <laughs> yeah. I was so stoked. Thanks, bro. Um, it just didn't work out. Yeah. Uh, 2016, um, you win Wadapalooza again. You kind of own that event. You're yeah. The, you're the king of Wadapalooza. I don't, I don't know. How come no one's going there and beating your ass? So, I mean, a lot of people have tried. But um, mm -hmm. I just, I think I kind of got so comfortable performing there it's my home crowd like i know the venue now and and i actually to the point where after 2017 i won so it was my third year winning Wadapalooza, and i was walking back to the hotel with joanne after i'd won and i was like how do i recreate this at the games like why can't i do this at the crossfit games and so this year i kind of thought to myself i was like i just need to pretend that Madison is Miami, you know, MIA, Madison, Miami, something, mm. tie it together and I like just try to recreate that vibe and obviously didn't quite do it, but I don't know. That was definitely like, if I can figure that out, I think I'll be In good. In 2016 at the CrossFit Games, you came out, it was the first couple events and uh, I was interacting with you. I'm like, hey dude, what the fuck is up with you? You're not being yourself. And you're like, oh, I'm trying something else. I'm like, what are you trying? You're like, oh, I'm going to be a little more reserved. Yeah. I remember and, you asking me that. Um, did you did did you feel like you were wasting energy by being because you know you like I said it's no joke you really are the most personable, likable, approachable person of all the athletes at the games, um, and, and and maybe there's five of you who deserve that title but, yeah but yeah, um, and, and, and I'm just hyperbolizing but you really are, and um, in 2016 you, you tried to turn that off why did you try to turn that off I started working with a sports psychologist that year like like too soon too close to the games it was right after regionals because at regionals that year i took second that's why it's not up there because i don't know why i didn't put it but that was the first year in the last of the two or three so i won 14 15 came in second in 2016 and it was because kind of i came out way too hot on that the nate workout the muscle up one and there were one or two other ones where i just like went out too hot and kind of blew up and i've done that once or twice and I got so frustrated by that that I was like, I need to just figure out how to like stay calm and in my zone and like, I don't know, maybe I was trying to emulate Rich, you know, the way he is very like same, even keel throughout that. I was like, I need to do that because I can't have this, these ups and downs. And uh, that year my coach was Dusty Highland and I don't know if he came up with it or I came up with it, but he said, um, it was calm and 
there was like a phrase, like a mantra that I ended up having, and it was like calm and confident or something like that, or like quick and calm, something like that. And that was what I kind of tried to bring into the games. I wanted to just. But you like, threw after after two events. I remember you come up to me like, "Fuck that." Yeah, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> throwing I, that shit out. <laughs> I, I seriously felt. I was so. I, I was like, "Wow, that, that was really cool to witness you go through that." Yeah, the transition, the trial yeah. period. Yeah, I mean, I felt. I mean, it shows some mental strength on your part. Uh, maybe or maybe the opposite. I don't know. I, I felt like very subdued. I remember that year we had the uh, the swim. It was just a swim and a run, and I just felt stuck. Like. I was doing well, and then on the last leg of the swim, a couple people passed me, and I like wanted to catch them, but all I could do was watch them, and I like couldn't find that gear to be like, oh, go, like don't let them pass you. I just kind of watched them pass me, and I was like, all right, well, that sucks, and finished, and I got out of the water. And This is 16? This is 16. The year prior, I had that epic sprint off with Chad McKay. This year, I like... Ben Smith and Matt Frazier both got out and like bolted past me and I didn't even try to race them. I just like let them go and I was like, blah, 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 I, what am I doing? I need to get out of this mindset. Like that, it's not working for me. So I need to like bring the fire back and and I I don't know, I wasn't, I, I couldn't uh, reignite it maybe to the same degree that I needed to quite yet. And when you take 15th, at that point, it, as I recall, you're you're thinking about maybe hanging up your. I just was so your cleats. I was so checked what do they call out. Them? Your cleats, your CrossFit cleats. Yeah, that works. Sure. I was just so checked out of uh, the 2016 CrossFit Games after those first few events. Like I was doing really poorly, and I was actually looking at the list of what the events were this morning because we were talking about maybe assessing a couple, and I just every one that I looked through, I was like, wow, I like hated that year. I don't know. Just was so uncomfortable. And what I was your to just best get finish it over with. in 16? Uh, event wise? Yeah. I think I maybe had one or two where I pulled off like a top five, but it was nothing incredible. I think. Ha- have you ever won an event? No, I the haven't. Man. I've, been so, I've taken second a few times, but I've never won one. You really are GPP as fuck. Yeah. Pretty, I mean, like, amongst the best guys in the world. Right. Man. Amongst the fittest guys in the world, you're really. I for mean, sure. Um, uh, even some of you, you know, your brethren who are who are scrapping to get into that top three, like Scott Panchik, even he's, I think, yeah. even he's won an event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even at regionals, when I've like won a few regionals, there have been, I think, two of them where I didn't have any event wins, or like the the only event win I had for the whole weekend came on like the last day, so relatively consistent. And then you show up at 2017, you. Um, this is awesome. You have this, by the way. Thank you. It's doing my job for me. You <laughs> it's won the. You, a great you point the, of reference. You won the region that year. Yep. Fuck. So you're pumped. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had done it before. That wasn't like. I, but it, but it's still good. Yeah. It's like, back hey, on I, track. I still got it. For sure. I still got it. For sure. Um, and you take first place in the team series. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I, I can kind of walk you through chronologically. Oh, yeah. Don't let me do that. my job. You no, go it's ahead. okay. You go ahead. That season. Um, the season kind of starts off with Wadapalooza because it's right at the beginning of the year, so I did well there. Uh, the Open was actually a good confidence booster for me because although I took first the year before, I took second this year, or 2017, but they were all, I won and done the workouts, put like very little pressure on it, and just felt really good about being able to pull that off without really dedicating too much to it because that year that I won, I redid the middle three workouts like twice each and put a lot of time and energy into that. And who knows, maybe that's why. I wonder if in 2016 you have the lowest place finish ever of someone who won the Open. Maybe. Well, That's like a maybe. Tommy Marquez I, question. I know Dan Bailey has yeah. won the Open, and yeah, I don't know one thing, if that same year. I mean, there's people who've won the Open that didn't. Well, I guess they maybe they went team. I mean, it's only really been Dan, Rich. me, Rich, and Matt. Yeah, and I want I I want to say when Dan won it, he's still finishing top ten. He's always Maybe. finishes top ten. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the that's the probably the worst finish of someone who won the Open. Possibly not that it's a bad finish, but oh, no, no, no. But, but I agree. I mean, but, it's bad yeah. for me. I don't like yeah. seeing that on there. But anyways, did better in the Open. Kind of won and done to them. Went into regionals. Actually, that regionals was pretty stressful. Like I still kind of can't believe that I ended up winning the regional because very shortly before regionals, I had the the pectator that everybody was kind of experiencing it was i think it was a minor one i don't i never got like an 
MRI or anything like that, but I was practicing the event. I had done all, I practiced all the events, like run through a full weekend and then took a day off. And on Monday I was doing intervals of the dumbbell snatches and muscle ups. And in one of the sets, I like felt, a, it was like a, it was, it was that, it was not one pop. It was like multiple, like is the best way I can think to describe it. And I was like, that was really weird. Actually, I have a, I was recording it. So I have the video, I step away and I'm like, I don't know what just happened. Guido was watching me and he's like, all right, go just hop back up on the rings and see how it feels. And I jumped up and I was like, no, like could not even support myself at the top. I was like, this oh, is not good. Wow. Did you want to cry? No, like but I, my whole fucking years over. I was freaking out. I was like, man, I, we had probably like two to three weeks before our regional was going to go. I called my coach. I was like, Hey, I'm, I don't want to freak you out. I'm trying not to freak out right now. I don't know what I did. I maybe strained it. I don't know if it's a tear. Like, I'm going to take care of it. And I just did everything I could for those three weeks, like rehab, prehab, all this stuff. But I went into regionals having only done like the week of was when I finally got back up on the rings and tried to see if I could do ring dips and muscle ups. And they felt okay. Like I could still feel a little bit of like sharp pain in there, but nothing to the point where it was going to keep me from doing the event. Is it all, are you all better now? I think so. Yeah, I just had to do ring dips in a competition for the first time again and it did get in my head a little bit. I was nervous in the warm up area like yeah, I, bet. I was walking around the whole time just doing this, massaging it, which I haven't done since regionals, but I survived that unscathed, so I think I'm over it. I don't have any residual like range of motion issues or pain or anything. But it was pretty nerve-wracking to go into regionals that way. I was super happy that I was able to pull it off. Um, I think my coach also having gone through that and he's so invested max in, in our performances that when that regional ended, he must've like collapsed on the ground cause he was worried about me, but I ended up winning it. Travis was in like sixth place or seventh place going to the final event. He needed to win it to be able to qualify. He wins. I come in second on the last event. And he locks up his spot. I lock up first. Max is probably just like, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> but what yeah. size shirt is that you're wearing right now? Large. You're large. Yep. You're always large. Yeah. You're never an part. extra large. Uh no, it'd be a little too baggy. It depends on like the cut and the style, but for the most part, large and in charge. What year is the year that the froning controversy happened? Is that fourteen? I think so. That's yeah. your first. I mean, that's if your you first. Even call it a controversy, but yeah, let's call it a controversy. I think the whole it's good thing for numbers. Silly, yeah. <laughs> good for numbers. Good for numbers. <laughs> is that the title of this episode? Break out the thesaurus. Yeah. No, we waited till the end, so no one will actually hear it. Perfect. <laughs> You're on the floor. It's the final event. Yeah. I honestly feel like I dreamt it at this point. Like I don't even know what the hell take, was take actually. Take a quick. Right. Yeah. He he says something to you. You share with what he says. He said, "Does he say something to you?" I think so. I, unless I awesome. like awesome. I love it. <laughs> unless I was like wad drunk or whatever, and right. totally imagined this, which I would have a hard time. You had an amazing first year. You were wearing the leader jersey for some of the events. Yes, as a rookie. Yep. You actually had. I think after the first day, you might have been in first place. Um, no, that was one of the things I was going to talk about with you later was that after the first day I was in third mm -hmm. and I, even that to me was amazing. Cause it was like Rich Froning, Jason Kalipa, Noah Olson. And I was like, what these dudes that are my idols that I've watched videos of forever. Like not only am I competing with them, but I'm hanging with them. And, and so the, the accusation is, is that he said that you claim that he said to you, I'm passing the throne to you. Not nah, it's not in those words. I from what I remember, and I literally don't even remember now. And so many stories have been told about it that my memory is twisted. But have you ever talked about it on a podcast before? Yes. Oh, uh, well. no, maybe I haven't. I okay. think I think I've only Next. done it Next. on. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've only done it with like CrossFit HQ. I think Ian asked me about it once. Okay. Um, but man, I think that he said from what I remember and what I said was it's yours now or something like that. Like it's your time now right. or something. Cause he right. knew it was going to be his last year. I had a good year. Frazier obviously had a good year. So who knows? Maybe he freaking said it to both of us. Maybe he didn't say it at all. Right. From what I remember, he said something along those lines, like go get it next year, buddy. Like, yep. whatever. I think I said something about that in an interview and people saw it and were like, wow, what's wrong with this kid? He's so cocky. He 
because whatever you said, Rich could, didn't acknowledge Verify. that he said it. I don't know. Is that what happened? Maybe I have no idea. That's possible that he was like, I didn't say that. And and there know. was some like weird drama about it, right? There was, So I don't know. I hate to like have it being brought up again because I know no, that. No, no, it's fine. I'm okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, so, man, I so I like them a lot, Rich and Hillary and their whole family and even though you haven't gone there to get the mojo, I haven't. I've no, I haven't gone there to get the mojo. I'm just waiting on my invite, but I think maybe <laughs> there's still this thick air around our relationship. I don't know. Well, I'm cool. Yeah. With, I'm I, I I really we doubt out back in the day. I really <laughs> doubt there's thick air on Rich's part. He yeah. is. I mean, I don't have any. Yeah. I'm cool with everybody. Or I want he, to be at least. Yeah, and he does too. He's yeah. a water. Off, he's like a duck. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but water off <laughs> his back. Either. Water oh, off his gotcha, back. Gotcha. Yeah. So this, yeah. Whatever. I have to say it. You want me to say it? Yeah, let's just talk All about right, it. Whatever. Let's, just so people know the whole So this, this video comes out. It was like a Fit Aid documentary. I said that. That's how it ended. This dramatic, like Rich oh. said, it's yours now. The video circulated. A couple people tagged like him and, and whatever. Hillary tweeted and said something like, um, I like all the CrossFit Games competitors, but there's this one that like rubs me the wrong way or something. A bunch of people... I don't know. Who knows if she was ever talking about me? Jesus Christ! How did you find that? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so Josh a bunch Bridges of people, commented. I don't know. That hashtag. Yeah. That hashtag. <laughs> that so... Is so... <laughs> this, if they post this, Hillary, I'm so sorry. I know Hillary. Listen. Hate, Hillary listen. hates this. Uh, listen, Bridges. Hillary doesn't like this because. When when but I talked is about fun, it, but it's funny. But it's like, at this point, hopefully, it's just it's, funny. It's it also funny. four years ago. You know? Yeah, it's like it's funny. The, the way people act in socials now. So whatever this <laughs> happened, I don't even know if she was talking about me. A ton of people commented. I don't know if you can see him there, but a lot of people were like, "You must be talking about him in this comment." Blah 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 blah. Word got back to me. I don't know. Joanne's looking in. Um, it, it made me so sick to my stomach that I was like, "Man, I don't want people to think I'm cocky. I hate that. I don't want that." And so I ended up. I did talk about it on um, what I don't even remember what it was. And Rich texts me. He's like, "Hey, man, Hillary's like really upset that this ended up coming out. That wasn't what she intended at all. Like, if you guys are cool, we we ended up Hillary and I linked up. We like apologized to each other. I apologized oh, awesome. to Rich. Yeah, like everything was all cleared out. Awesome. And uh, until I did this podcast, <laughs> yeah, you're bringing up the. So it did. Dirt. It did get you guys squashed. It for sure. We definitely did. I mean, it's still not like. We're best friends or anything, but um, I I have absolutely no problem. Do you with have Rich's phone know. number in your? Um, yeah, I do. Cell phone? Rich and I have texted like once or twice. Um, don't don't say it. Don't say it. Someone will be like, no, you only text half a time, and <laughs> don't give any, don't give out any like no. details that someone could. Yeah, who knows yeah. if the internet will take that and run with? Right. Yeah. Whatever. But no, we're we're cool. I that's that was the that was all the drama and stuff that happened. It obviously got blown up into something that I didn't think it ever was, and I still don't think that they're. Were you disappointed when he retired? Um, no, I didn't. I mean, I didn't think much of it. I was still kind of just like focused on my journey. I the only I've had somebody say to me like, "If you were to ever win, wouldn't you want to have done it like going against the best?" And I mean, now people are saying that Fraser is the best, and so there's always Fraser is a freak, huh? Yeah, he's pretty damn good. Like frustratingly so. Yeah. yeah. Um. The 2017 games, um, and, and correct me because it, it's my memory versus like you know your memory, and, yeah. and mine is horrible. Mine's um, not amazing either. It's, it, <laughs> Ask Joy. It's the final event. Um, it's over. Everyone has exited the stadium, except for I think Matt and me and you. Yeah. And you're just down at the end, just like you know at the at the finish line, just sitting there on that. It was heavy. Oh man, that was heavy, yeah. right? Yeah, I started that day in second place and I really genuinely believed and had the feeling like, oh, this is it. This is finally the year I'm going to finish on the podium. I'm going to do this. You started the day in second place? Yeah. Yeah, that was just a downhill day. I thought I should do pretty well on the Madison triplet. I'm decent at running. I, the sandbag is not a big deal. I'm good at burpees. And, and I don't know, for whatever reason, I kind of blew up had a bad event, went from second to, I think, fifth or something. 
they announced the rope climb overhead squat ski erg event. I was like elated. Those are my favorite movements. I love rope climbs. I love overhead squats probably more than anything else. Ski erg, whatever. That was not as big of a factor as the other stuff. So I'm like, all right, I can still do this. I can get myself back up there and just had this like not out of body. That's not the right term, but I just didn't have control. You, you, you know, when you've have got- you ever done LSD? No. Or mushrooms. I've never really done any drug to be then honest. Then you're not allowed to use that term out of body. Okay. Go sorry. on. Okay. Why not? So <laughs> that's, that's the okay. rules, of, I, rules yeah. of the podcast room. Deal. Rules of the podcast All right. room. So <laughs> my arms and I'm sure almost everybody listening has done a workout where their grip has fatigued and like gone to failure. I literally like slowly could feel that happening to my forearms where on the first round I was fine holding the bar over my head the whole time I dropped it and I was actually I finished the first round in first like I had done 31 squats and I think Matt and uh, Brent had done 30 or whatever so I dropped the bar and I kind of shook my arms out and I was like whoo all right this is a little grippier than I thought and I went for the second round did my first one and on my second one started feeling that like numbness in my hands and in my arms and I was like oh shoot this is not good hopefully this doesn't had you ever felt that before in your CrossFit career I have I've never I've, yeah definitely in training I've never like gone to failure Tommy V is the most rope climbs I've ever done in a workout I almost I think I took like second in that event at regionals and had this awesome time and I've just never really had that much of an issue with it and I really think what it ends up going back to is the sledgehammer I've never done anything like that with the reverberation and I think that just super fatigued all the little muscles in my hand. Because I remember that night, which I don't know if it was the night before, I was eating dinner and I could barely hold my fork and my knife. And for some reason, I didn't think about that. I didn't think like, oh, that could play a factor tomorrow. I need to like take <laughs> right, care of that. Right. I just went to bed. Right. Uh -huh. So your hand was so blown. Your, your arms were just full of blood. Yeah, just super fatigued, numb, like couldn't feel them to the point where by the third round, I did my first one and I was like, I'm gonna fail this next one. I just have nothing left. Like I couldn't even squeeze anything. Like I could probably, I don't know, I was gonna come up with an analogy, but I can't. So I, I went up for the second rope climb. I think I had to wait so long that everybody else was already like almost at the barbell. They had done the ski and it was at that point on the third round of this two, two, three thing that I, could like f that same feeling of it slipping away. I was like, no, it was right there. And that solidified itself on the fourth round. I failed my first rope climb. I I think it was the first or the second one, but I went up, I think it was the second one because I did one barely. I went up for the second one, just like everything I had was hanging on, resorted to like the thing where you kind of do like the swing, 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 reach swing swing reach and eventually like went to reach for the last one to touch and the one hand that was holding on just gave out and I just pretty much fell all the way down from the top and failed and that was when I was like all right it's over like I'm gonna lose this event I'm not gonna finish on the podium but who knows I got to get up and do my last rope climb because I didn't really, I don't know what the other scores are on the other heats. Maybe somebody else didn't do well. So if I do one more rope climb, maybe I'll finish in like 20th instead of 38th, which I think is honestly what I took. Um, hey, you know, there's a guy who failed a rope climb and, you know, things turned out pretty well for him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Two guys. Not bad. Two? Oh. Yeah. The year, um, both Rich and Matt had ropes in oh, their yeah, demise. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I remember that. Thick and quick I remember or something. cheering Matt on during that event. Sorry, you're you're going. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Um, so you get up there. So I touch the beam on my second rope climb of the last round. My grip is so shot that I like pinch it with my thighs and my hands and slide all the way down because you have to hold on until the black line. Dude, shredded the tips of all my fingers. Had I I don't know if I still have a scar. Oh, I see a little bit. I see a little. I had bit. I had like nasty um, rope burn on the insides of both of my thighs. And I was, again, kind of like checked out at that point. I was so disappointed because that was one that I thought should have been a really good one for me. And it that bumped me way down. 
and I went back to the warm-up area. We only had that final event, and it was like such a quick turnaround that it was another one of those like almost checked out feelings. And I had three awesome people that like really turned my turned me around to be able to. You go were in like on the numb final. out there on the floor. Like everyone left, and literally you were just kind of like stuck. It looked like like you were in paralysis. after the rope climb or after the last last event. After the last, last event. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, you're Go good. on, finish your sorry. story. So I just really briefly, after the rope climb thing, before the last event, I was kind of like so upset that I didn't have any desire to even do the last workout. But Joanne, my coach Max, and Guido all individually, like at different times without knowing, said like the perfect things to me that got me to like, all right, I need to go out there. I need to finish strong. I need to like be proud of my effort. I need to not let my friends and family down. I can't go out there and just like walk through it. So I went out. I was like, all right, I'm going to finish strong, do the best that I can. And kind of like my tertiary, is that the proper way that you would say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my tertiary goal for the year was to finish top five. Right? It was win was my number one goal. Get on the podium was my number two goal. And then Thirdly, I wanted to finish top five, which I had never done before. Right. So I finished the last event. I was kind of waiting to see whether or not I had accomplished that. And and there was such a bittersweet, you know, like I didn't want to celebrate fifth when I should, like I could have been celebrating a right. second or a third or something right. like that. So that was kind of my my state in that moment that you are uh, remembering or referencing was that excitement at the morning of being in second to that just complete disappointment of like, I don't want to say I blew it, but for it to have kind of like slipped out Unru of my grip unraveled. literally and figured You didn't meet your expectations. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just like crushed, but at the same time, like still wanted to be kind of happy that I finished fifth, but felt guilty about being happy about that. Are you going to win the Open this year? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to do the same thing I did last year and just kind of one and done them, give them my best effort. And that is not my primary focus. Mm -hmm. I think winning the Open is, I've told you this before, I think it's like equivalent to winning the Doesn't games. Doesn't matter. Oh, oh, no, oh I think it's way. huge. Okay. Cool. I think it's fucking huge. You, you know what's funny about it? I, th I think the Open should get, like, the Open winner should get 100,000 bucks. Dude, I, the I Open's mean, insane. That would dude. be amazing, but it's so funny, and this is like, you guys might have to cut this out because of CrossFit, and this is not a. a, a, a I dig it. HQ. Yeah, not at all. But the year I won the Open, I was like, man, this is amazing. I did it, whatever. You don't get like a, a piece of paper. You don't get a trophy. No I think, shirt. Dude, I think like eight months later, I got a shirt that said fittest in the United States. <laughs> and I was like, ah. Or they should say world or universe Fuck. on it. Hey, yeah, I, <laughs> that, was, that was all because that Speedy comment, man. Maybe, yeah. All because every of that. Every other open winner has gotten a big check and like hey, a trophy. <laughs> your win was insane winning the open. Yeah, it was cool. I was really proud of that. that There's was nothing better that than always... me saying that on the podcast either, by the way. I'll take it. Yeah, it's better than any fucking shirt. Yeah, years, yeah. Years, years later. I have to pee again, but I want to finish on on, on a note. Okay. Something practical. Um, a couple practical things. So you took your L1. Yes. What year was that? 2010. And did you love it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. For a while, I was saying it was the best weekend of my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's cool. When you're like just at the beginning and you're so hungry and like obsessed with everything CrossFit and you watch the YouTube videos and then especially to have had Spieler as my level one guy, like, I don't know. It was amazing. Do you remember who else was there? Uh, it was Chris Spieler, Chuck Carswell, Jenny Orr. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mike, Mike G. Mike G, oh, yeah. I think Jenny Orr did 1,000 air squats in a row once. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was really cool. What do you got? Oh, this is the L one guy. Oh, cool. Hardbound. That's awesome. It's I badass. Haven't, I haven't seen that in we a long time. We sell it on the site. Cool. You can have it. That one? Yeah, this is yours. Cool, man. Thank you. Let me give this to you. Appreciate that. It's a yeah, nice gift. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it was, it, it, and what do we it, have? It's really it's really if you're gonna spend two days doing something, there's very few th things that you can do in two days that are better than the L one seminar. There's yeah. things you can do in ten minutes that are better than the L one seminar. It's for two minutes for that <laughs> yeah. matter. But um, in two days, that's the perfect. Oh, my span. God. That's like it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Ed Vellner in here and he's like, oh, I haven't gone. I'm like, you're fucking uh, nuts. Well, dude. I don't know I if you beat his I don't ass know if in the this, <laughs> I don't know if at fucking this Vellner. point it would be as amazing as it was for me then. You know, like I could see now if you're already a CrossFit Games well, athlete, it's not so cool said, to you. That being said, then there's only 100 of you like that. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To everybody else. Like, I, I don't would... care how fit or smart you are or think you know shit about fitness. Definitely. Like, But it was, like, life-changing for me then because I kind of did it. I think a lot of people maybe are the same way that they'll, at the beginning, do the level one for themselves. Like, I hate to say that selfishly, but rather than going to learn how to coach people, I was going because I wanted to learn how to like mm-hmm. be a better athlete. Yeah, that's why most people should totally go. Reasonable. That's why yeah. people should go. Yeah. yeah. The coaching thing should be the 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 fiftieth reason you yeah. go, in my yeah. opinion. I've never gone to an L one to for coaching. Yeah. But I definitely I mean I got both pieces of it from that and uh it was really, really cool for sure. Yeah, you do get both pieces. Yep. But but it's 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 also the manual to um to how to operate the human body and to for the body to best represent it's DNA and to have longevity in your life and you're a good salesman. And it's be, like it's the user guide for life, right? And bone good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So we talked about the L one, um, squatting. Uh, um, when Patrick was here, he re- that, that thing he said about building strength really like got to me. You know what I mean? I'm like, Holy shit. Um, <laughs> is that the reason why you haven't won the CrossFit games? Cause you didn't start squatting young enough. If you had started squatting, if you had 20 more pounds on your squat, let's say you had 20 more pounds on your front squat and 40 more pounds on your back squat. Mm-hmm. W- would you have won the games already? I don't know. It's actually funny because I went back and kind of looked at the breakdown of the and, games. Sorry. And the implications that, that, that come with being that much stronger in each of those. I'm not saying like, just having the, meaning, right, right, like meaning the, your snatch be is better. Yes, yeah, sir. Blah, blah, yes, blah. sir. Um, I would like my brain wants me to think that and I've always been so driven to get stronger and thinking that is the ultimate fix for like the gap that I've needed to fill. But when I go back and look at kind of all the events, if I were to have won the strength events, it didn't necessarily put me in first at the games. Okay. Sometimes I think that was kind of what Max had just broken down for me and he made it seem like hey, like we need to get you stronger, but that's not the end all be all. Like we need to keep building these other things. Like if you had taken first on run, swim, run instead of eighth, that was a, a bigger point spread than if you had taken fifth instead of 20th on the snatch. Like, Okay, I like that. I like that. That's nice. Uh, <laughs> I do. Um, and Vellner said this that really interested guy. me. He, he said, um, and you can't rush this back squat thing you can't rush building Is this, this a direct quote? this strength, no sir, huh. um, because that's what will lead to injury. You can't back squat heavy, every heavy every fucking day. You you can't force. You know what I mean? Like oh, like somebody's bing bonging. Like you can really work some movements. You can really work the handstand walk and really practice every day. Yeah. But you can't like be trying to improve your back squat every day or else you'll, it'll lead to injury. Do you? Uh, any... Kind of, yeah. I mean, I, I can imagine that if you overload your body and squat heavy every day that you would end up messing up your knees or your backs, your hips or something. But um, I mean, the way I did it was just a, a super simple like squat cycle the the hatch squat cycle i did like two times just at the beginning to get that volume accumulated on my legs and even in crossfit workouts where you're squatting like i think that's probably making you stronger uh, and for me back then like the rx weights were close to my one maxes i remember a workout at peak where it was like front squats at 185 in the workout like a I don't know, like 10 reps every round or something. And I was super close to my winner at max. So I had to like really fight through that in Metcons as well. So I was kind of doing my strength work, but then in Metcons ended up doing additional strength work just because the RX numbers were so close to my maxes. Go figure. CrossFit can make you strong too. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, dude, I what did I say? When I started CrossFit, I weighed 150 and now I weigh one, I was 200 at one point. You know, like I've put on so much size doing CrossFit. Somebody the other day, so in four, so you average, you put on about 10 pounds. You put about eight pounds on every year. So when I finished college, or sorry, I want to finish college. When I was in college, I started CrossFit. I was 155. I now weigh 185. So you could call it 30 pounds at this point. Divided by five. Across five years. Six pounds of muscle a year. Yeah. Yeah. Just about. And it was in the prime of your life as a man. It was because of that. I mean, all those growth factors, but also because of the fact that I'd never touched a barbell, right? My body had never had exposure to like that heavy stuff. My legs, my legs are probably where a lot of the weight came from because I, they were untouched before that. And 
doing the squatting, the snatching, the cleaning, all that stuff, definitely my body started packing on stuff to protect me from that barbell that it was not exposed to before. It was all egg beaters. Mm -hmm. That was it. <laughs> no, Olson, thanks for coming. <laughs> hey, my pleasure. Did you have fun? Yeah, I did. There was actually, I, I don't know if this is like cheesy to do, and I don't know how you can nope, work it, it in. I, it's totally cheesy. Do, uh, do it, do it, do it. What do you think I'm going to do right now? I don't know. I'm excited, though. It's, that's nothing crazy. Just because he doesn't know. Yeah. I was just the, uh, I feel like one cool thing that now that I'm starting to think about what my impact can be on like the community and what can I do outside of just being an athlete, you know, I think one of my appeals that can go out to the the general population is that the this like to have started from whatever and become a games athlete like there are so many guys out there that like don't know what they're gonna do and maybe don't believe in themselves like the young guy that's just starting or girl or whatever but like it's totally i feel like possible and i hope people can get inspired by that like hey this guy started crossfit in 2011 and in 2014 was competing at the games like i don't know if that is possible anymore just because the competition level is a lot higher but like that's it, but that's not really the point it's goal setting you yeah set a goal and you it's for possible. sure it's but it, dreams it, are possible you and even dream starting and you so far off i think a lot of people think all oh, the guys that started crossfit they started and they were already so good like they lot, came in yeah. and snatched this and did this like i didn't i started crossfit and i couldn't even snatch 95 pounds like just don't get discouraged by that, you know, like really, really stick to it. And if you dive in and fully commit yourself to it, who knows what the heck can happen. And who knows what other cool stuff will happen along the way. For sure. Oh my God. I, my life is so cool now because of all this CrossFit stuff, like all the trips that Joanne and I have been on, like even coming out here, this is a CrossFit even. related event. What? Even. Even. Even coming out here. What did I say? You said even. I'm just saying this, that's kind of an insult. I don't know. I, like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, no, no. I he's like, I CrossFit's just, so no. fun. It's giving me so I much think, opportunity. Even coming like out the here. Fact I, I think you're, you're getting kind of surly with that body language <laughs> right now. <laughs> For those listening to us on iTunes, go watch it on YouTube. Oh, man. Yeah. You <laughs> no, guys are awesome. Thank you. We'll have you on. We'll talk about you as a role model and the importance that even a pipsqueak like you weighing 112 pounds can. That's what I'm saying. That'll be the next episode. Awesome. Thank you. 